Yo best. Yo best. Yo best. That shit best. crazy. On a Saturday. It's all even with your boy Barry Grant. You can catch me on Instagram and Twitter at All Even Podcast. You can listen to the show on SoundCloud as well as YouTube, Anchor, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Breaker, and wherever you find your podcasts available. What a beautiful Saturday it is. Lots to get into. NFL, free agency, and man, that cap is starting to mess a lot of teams up. But we'll talk about it. And then my favorite segment of the week, phone a friend. I got my man Dre Hove coming through. We're going to talk about a whole bunch of stuff. Jets football. He's a big time Chicago Bulls fan, and you you already know how I feel about Jordan and the Bulls. But you know that's that's going to be a great conversation as well. And then the greatest segment on the planet, Dummy of the Week. So let's just jump right into it. The NFL offseason is here, and boy, does it look interesting. I mean, you have a lot of teams that are scrambling you have a lot of teams that are flourishing or waiting and there's a lot of cuts that are being made now the reason why this is interesting to me is because projection and what people think something is going to be down the road and it ends up not being like that at all no contingency plans were put in it was just yeah you know this is gonna turn out fine and putting all my eggs in this basket and we're just going to go for it. A lot of times, you know, people get successful off of that and great. But more times than not, people get screwed over that way because they're not thinking through all the steps. And the reason why I bring this up is because the salary cap in the NFL so what, $182 million? All because of COVID? That's that's a problem. Because you're seeing a lot of high-priced stars or very good players getting cut. You're seeing a ton of restructuring going on around the league. And it's because of projection. Well, we thought that this was going to be the cap number of this. Was, it was going to be here, here, here. But you're not thinking about any catastrophic events. And I don't understand how people go about life that way. I'm not saying that you have to be a pessimist. I'm not saying that you have to be a doomsday prophet or believer. But it's about being careful with how you go about things. Maybe I shouldn't give this guy all this money because yeah, I don't I just don't know where the cap is going to be in 3 years. So let's front load this thing and let's protect ourselves on the back end. You don't you don't really see much of that. You see it in the NFL, okay, yes, but it's not done enough. Because like I said, projection. We heard that the TV deals are going to be crazy within the next couple of years and the cap may go up to 350 million dollars a team great more money to be spent more guys to get paid higher contracts but at the end of the day what if it doesn't happen what are the plans that are in place see how this country's run is that we wait until things go bad until we put in certain provisions, certain things to prevent it from happening again. But when it was designed, why weren't these talks being had? Why weren't these conversations being had? Why weren't these things put in place then? We are a reactionary society. Something happens, we react. We don't plan. We don't plan properly. That's the problem that I have with the NFL and their cap situation. Because there has to be a catastrophe clause within the CBA, within the cap, that can be able to protect both player and team. A global pandemic happened and sports has been changed worldwide. Every sport has been impacted. They have to be smarter moving forward. 
can't just say, oh, well, we got over this. Now we're just going to go back to regular business. No, you got to make sure contingency plans are in place. So the next time something like this happens, everybody's prepared. The New Orleans Saints, they were like $70 million over the cap at one point. They've been cutting guys left and right. Still have more work to do. And what team are they going to have left? All because of projection. Well, we're going to go all in for the Super Bowl and see what happens. Okay. Now you're seeing exactly what happens. Graveyard. Same thing with the Chiefs. They had to cut two offensive bookend tackles. Now Pat Mahomes restructured his deal and freed up some money. Same thing with the Bears. They restructured some contracts and freed up $23 million worth of cap space. But you still have guys that are being on a chopping block and getting released. Guys like Casey Hayward on the Chargers. It continues. Guys are not being franchise tagged. It's a mess. So many free agents are out there. So many wide receivers that are looking for new homes. And they're not going to be getting any big deals out here. I don't think so. I think guys are going to be on prove-it deals. One-year contracts, maybe two. If they get a three- or four-year deal, it's not going to be for a particular high number. I don't think so. So what are we looking at for the future? What are we looking at for the future of the NFL? That nasty P word. Projection. Projection, projection, projection. What they should be doing is prevention. That's the P word that should be used when it comes to the cap in the NFL. Prevention. Let's prevent this thing from happening again. Let's make sure that we put precautionary measures in place to be able to help both player and team. You got enough smart people in the NFL to figure it out. Do it. Because if you go ahead and operate like this and another pandemic comes because at some point another pandemic will come, how are you going to respond? You're going to fold? You're going to expect people to just behave like normal? You're going to just start cutting people left and right like everybody's doing this year? It's not a good plan. So I hope the P word that's used is prevention. Coming up after the break, phone a friend with my man Dre Hove on a Saturday. It's all even. I've had so many people tell me that Anchor is great. Anchor is this. Anchor is that. But I have to tell you, man, those people were right. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or your computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your own podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Why wait? Get at it now. Welcome back, y'all. So let's get to my favorite segment, Phone a Friend. Call him up, 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 call him up. Competing for a reason, trying to stay undefeated, yeah. Call him up. Call him up, 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 call him up. Game of the season, don't lie, we're all leaving, yeah. Who we have on the show today is one of my good friends. I've known him for a very long time, probably longer than I should. My man, Dre Hope. Welcome to the show, my man. Yes, yes. You know, um, I've thought about this moment for a very long time, you know, (laughs) since your first all even um episode i was like man i can't wait to be on this damn show <laughs> you know um but now nah, man it's an honor to to be here you know um you know i'm gonna start it off and i'm gonna end it as well on the same note but yo super proud of you bro everything you've done so far um you should have been doing this you were made for this you know better late than never though yeah uh you know but i'm proud of you man just keep going at it and i know i text you this stuff this positivity stuff and you're always telling me to shut up you know? <laughs> <laughs> now nah, but for real man it's an honor to be here um man you know 
No, nah, I appreciate yeah, it, man. I, I appreciate it, man. Like, you know, just like Bishop last week, you know, he gave me my flowers and then you're going to berate me later. So I might as well just get all the nice stuff out of the way. And, and then you're going to make me feel like crap later. So it's fine. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to do my best to be on, you know, neutral side with you. I'm also trying to, you know, I've been hearing a lot of people on your show. You know, I listen to your show a lot. You know, I already told you, you know, I'm the, I'm Robert De Niro and the fan. You know what I mean? I'm always <laughs> sending you the picture. So, uh, you know, I'm a big fan of the show. So, you know, I've seen the guests, you know, some people take it a little bit light on you. I feel like. They do. But, they do. They you do. Know, but I'm going to try to be like that, but not really be like that. So, you know what it is, man? It's like they, they'll, they'll kill me in regular chats. As soon as they get on the show, they want to, they want to be hot. They don't want to, they don't want to they don't wanna come at me like that. You know what I yeah. mean? It's the, it's the, but it's the respect, you know what I mean? It's the respect that they have for you now now you know and nah, they keep it in mind you know once you get once you get big you know they yeah. want to you know they want they want to stick around for that you know? right 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 now i respect it man I, I love my friends i love y'all for that but um you know we let's start with let's start with our love for for movies you oh, know yeah. because you know we 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 share a common love for film and you know kind of take me into why you love film so much like what drew you to like be so obsessed with it like the way I am. Yeah, I mean, well, for one thing was that growing up, um, my father, um, he took, we were literally every Sunday at the movies. Nice. Always, we would see the crappiest movies to <laughs> the best movies. But just the whole feel of going to a movie theater, you know what I mean? The, the excitement of it, the surround sound, the big ass TV, like, it makes such a difference watching movies at a theater than at home. Yeah, it's true. You know, I know there's been enough times that you watch something at home and you're like, damn, I wish I watched this shit in the movies. Right. Like, you know, there's certain, and I just love it, man. You know, and, and I live off it. We, 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 we live off it. We quote so much off it, you know? Bro, it's crazy how much, like, when I think about it, my brain is nothing but movie scripts and yes. scenes from movies. Like that, that's yes. all it is. It's it's ridiculous. Yes, I, I do the same exact thing. Like I picture myself like, oh, this is right out of a, you know, right out of a Scorsese movie. And I picture <laughs> myself living that. And even and even in real life, there's just moments I woke up, I'm like, yo, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll do what Leonardo DiCaprio will do in this movie, but I'm right. like, no, real life, bro. I can't, you know, I can't do that. Yeah. Nah, man, movies is the, and, and we've always gone back to back, like when there's trailers. Yes. Like, we always we are, send each we other are stuff. Nuts. <laughs> yeah, we. I love. I live for trailers. Sometimes you know what I mean. I would cop tickets to go to the movies. If I'm gonna be late for the trailers, I'm already in a bad mood. Exactly. Yeah, I gotta get there before those 15 minutes are up. Like, don't. And I don't want to yeah. miss one. I want to yeah. see all of them. I want to see all of them. And you know, it's the best time when you can actually be a critic. Right. You know? It's the trailer. You you know, because all the time a trailer finishes in a movie. You, you have to say something about it. Right? <laughs> you have to you have to look to the person you're with and you be like, it's trash. Right. All the time, too. You know, all you got, the time. You're like, oh, man, that looks good. You know, yeah. you're always Rob, Robert and Eber, Roger and Eber when you're, yeah. when you're there. You know? I had I had a thing where me and my homies used to go to the um to the movie theater and the trailer used to finish and it used to get like really quiet. You know, that that like second yeah. or two before the other one plays, I used to go corny. <laughs> 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 you know, used to crack I, mean, up I feel like I've been with with you when when you when you've yes, done that. Probably, yeah. probably. Like, trust me, bro. But it, it's it's definitely a good feeling. Like, since this whole COVID thing, you know, I'm sure people are starting to go back to the theaters a little bit. I guess, but yeah. I don't know when I'm ever gonna be comfortable going back there, man. It's and I miss it. I miss it. I'm not gonna lie to you, man. Like that that experience of just the whole you know, going to the movie theater, buying your ticket and, you know, going up the escalator, getting your food, yes. like every day, like everything about it is just like, I love it. And, and we've been, we've been separated from that for like a year now over yeah. or, you know, over a year or whatever. And it's like, it's, it's nuts, man, how you can be able to adapt to life without things. And, you know, you miss it, but you're going about life without it you know what i mean yeah i mean i've always said i've never pictured myself not going to the movie theaters yeah you know i've always but now it's like you've gone over a year without it and you're just kind of like damn like i guess yeah know? but i miss it though i definitely miss it i miss the feeling 
And hopefully, you know, things will get back to normal. We could, we could go do that and, you know, chop it up and go see the Meg part two. <laughs> Shout, <laughs> shouts to Basco for the Meg. That was a disaster. Yeah. <laughs> he was so excited and hyped for that movie. I, I don't know why. I don't know why. Yeah, you guys are honestly, you're the only two people I could go see like those trash ass. Movies. Yes. Yes. Like, I, I can't do that with my wife. Like, <laughs> no, with no. Anybody else. Like, that, because really. she'll, she'll never let you hear the end of it. You know, know. divorce, bro, right away. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, what do you think about what HBO Max is doing in regards to, you know, the dual release stuff? Like, I think that that's the way things are going to go now. I think they've developed this model that may not go away, man. What, do, what are your thoughts on that? Yo, HBO Max has been on fire. Yeah. Like, they've been dropping heat, like, as far as documentaries, movies, and all these releases that are right. coming, you know? And we've talked about the, you know, the Justice League Snyder Cut that's coming out and that's huge yeah but you know them doing that man has changed the game because it's made you realize that man you don't have to go to the theaters right you know all these all these things are you know all these um movies and shows and you know they're especially these exclusives you know they're they're you can watch them from home right you know you had recently the what was it called the judas and the judas and the messiah Judas and the Messiah just came out. There was that other one with Denzel Washington and and um, Jared Leto. Yeah, that was a good one. That was and, a good one. You know, like these are all movies that are top actors, right? You know, and they're being played exclusively in HBO Max, right? And it's kind of like, yeah, it's changed. The, it's honestly changed the game, man. And I like it. I'm all, yeah. I'm all for it. Yeah, know? I ain't gonna lie to you, man. I, I'm, I'm definitely with that, with that thought process too. It's like, you know, I'm looking at Netflix and. Netflix loses, they lose titles all the time, and yet your your subscription price is going up. And I'm like, oh, man, yeah. you look at HBO Max, and I'm like, do I really need Netflix now? Like, like HBO yeah. Max is starting to be like, listen, you can just push that aside now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because I like that model. Like, I think, obviously, you know, being exclusively in the box office in the theaters is going to make you more money, I think. But yeah. they got to be they, they have to have some type of decent revenue stream to 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 have to to, to be able to do both, I think. No, and I yeah. Think that, and, I, and I think that's a smart way to do it. I think like, you know, think about for all the the older folks that don't feel comfortable going to the movie theaters, even before COVID and all that stuff. Like, you know, movie theaters are, are normally for couples and people, the younger people and stuff. But. Maybe now, you know, old, the older crowd can be able to just sit there and watch a movie as well. So it's like you can be able to corner both markets and that that business model. Like I said, it's 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 definitely it's definitely great, man. Yeah. And, and to add to that, yo, uh, you know, the older couples and everything like that. Yo, man, not for nothing, but the movie theaters got very expensive. Yes. Yes. They got super duper expensive, like, you know. You, it used to be one of the cheapest dates to go on. Now, now, now it's not. You, you just movie for two with ticket, uh, food. Yeah. You know, if you go into the dining theaters with all the other stuff, bro, bro you 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 walking out of there spending a hundred dollars. Yo, easily. And imagine yeah. if you have, and if you have kids. Oh my you know goodness! I mean? yeah. You go to the theater with your kids, yo, you're spending over a hundred dollars, a hundred and fifty dollars. Right. You right. know, because then your kids are gonna want to eat something. Right. You know, drink something, whatever. They and want to see it in three D, or. <laughs> yeah, they didn't want to see it 3D. Yo, I stopped doing 3D. Like, <laughs> eventually, I was like, nah, man. I can't. You know, do I want to pay 40 bucks or 55 bucks? Right, you know, right. Like, like, it's the same thing. Nah, man. Like, before I was all for it all. 5D, 6D, give it all. I'm, I'm paying whatever. But now, man, I'm like, nah, chill, man. Give me that yeah. shit in 2D, I'll take it. Listen, you know? I, I remember when... Uh, when IMAX came out and everybody's oh, like, yo, man. bro, you got to watch it in IMAX. I'm like, all right, cool. I'm going to check it out. So I went to, I was like, I'm going to the movie theater this weekend. Check the ticket. I, I was like, <laughs> okay, how much is one? Like, that's one ticket? Like, come on now. That's ridiculous, man. <laughs> Just for some extra speakers. It comes like in a big ass, a bigger screen. Come on now. Come on. This is, they, they yo, want, they want uh, but yo, not for nothing. Yo, I love IMAX. <laughs> Like I love IMAX, but I would go only there to watch selective movies. So right, right. you don't you're not gonna watch every type of movie there. Exactly. Yeah. I've always went there, like for all the Marvel movies, I always said, yo, know, like all the Avengers, I was like, nah, man, I gotta watch this right. IMAX. Yeah, that you makes sense. Me? Yeah. Like all those movies, like when it was um, you know, the Dark Knight, 
you know, um, in, like Inception, like, you know, like these movies are movies are made for IMAX. Yeah. You know? And actually the first IMAX movie, one of the first IMAX movies my father took me was to um, Jurassic Park. Really? Nice. Nice. And that just blew my mind. And ever since that, I was kind of like, uh, IMAX though. But yeah, you can't go to IMAX for everything. You're, you're spending $60 all, yeah, the, yeah. all the time. So, yeah. That's, that's, I think I watched... I think I watched the first Jurassic Park maybe maybe twice, but it's 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 legit though. Like it's it still holds up to this day. Honestly, oh, it's, a, it's a classic. Yeah, it's, man. It's, it's the, and it's the best one out of out of all of them. Right now, what what is your favorite genre of movie? Man, that's that's a good. I, it might have to be comedy, man. I yeah. don't know. I'm a, I'm a. It might be comedy, and I it you know us, man. But like, I'm into really. Stupid. Right, we're we're into that. We're into that dry, like just off the wall anchorman, super troopers. You know, yeah, super. Yeah. <laughs> I even like super troopers too. Right. It wasn't. It wasn't even that good. But no, was, no. You know, but nah, man. I think comedy, man, because it's just like I feel like whenever like um if I'm just flipping the channels or you know whatever Netflix and I'm just want to something that's not gonna get I have to pay so much attention to. Yeah. I put on a good comedy that, and I just let it play. Yeah. And, and I know I'm going to laugh no matter, like, no matter what, if I'm paying attention or I'm not, because I just right. know the scene that's already coming up and I'm already <laughs> laughing before it, before it, before it happens, you know? Right. But now I have to say comedy, man, because, you know, always gets you in a good mood and everything. And, and it's the most quotable stuff. Like, yeah, that's true. That's like, true. It's, it's the I most quotable stuff. I mean, the thing is, like, I like comedy as well, but I, you know, I love my, I love my, um, uh, my action films. I love, you know, I love the Quentin Tarantino. Anything that Quentin Tarantino oh. makes is just like, I don't care what it is. Like, it's I mean, just like <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I know Tarantino don't fall under comedy, although he does have a lot of comedy right. in his movies. Yeah, but Tarantino's the god, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he definitely. Whatever is. he does is just, is just fire. Like he's. Yeah amazing and always what it's been about his movies too besides everything is his dialogue yes the like, dialogue is always the best man well i was just literally watching a week ago uh reservoir dogs oh and good one. the whole opening scene when they're on the dinner table and they're just and um steve buscemi is giving his which is who's mr pink in the movie he's giving his um his whole philosophy behind not leaving a tip <laughs> And the dialogue is about 15 minutes. Right. Just about tips, you know? <laughs> like, why you should not give a tips. Yeah, and, yeah. Yo, bro, and, that, and it was so good. It was so entertaining. Shit, it almost convinced me, like, damn, maybe I should, I should stop leaving he, tips. He's right. <laughs> <laughs> now, nah, that's 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 true, man. Like 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 I said, his dialogues are are amazing. And But, but here's a question, though. Who would you take? Would it be... Quentin Tarantino, or would it be Martin Scorsese? Um, you know what, man? I think I would still go with Tarantino. I am with you. I'm with you. I would still take Tarantino. I mean, the thing is about Scorsese. I mean, I feel a lot of his older stuff, yeah, were way better. But then, like later on, kind of started. I don't know dying down a little bit for me but yeah, I his, mean, his movies are solid but they, you know when i think about like you know I, I agree with you like tarantino movies they're just like like you watch them and you're just like yo i enjoyed that two and a half hours you yeah. know what i'm saying like that two and a half hours went by and it was like i wasn't bored I, I was locked in from the opening credits to the end you know what i mean yeah and you always know the ending's gonna escalate Right, you know, like even if the movie was like super long and it's kind of dragging, those last ten minutes <laughs> just, you know, like what was the last one? The, the once upon a time. Yeah, yeah. Um, that yo, yo, that turned up quickly. <laughs> <laughs> it escalated so quickly, like <laughs> so quickly. And if you were bored throughout the whole movie, yo, those last ten minutes will make up for. Right, everything. it was it was well worth it. It was well mm -hmm. worth it. It was well worth it. Yeah, but nah, yeah. I would take Tarantino, man. I think he can't he can't do wrong, bro. I'm like yeah. every every movie he's honestly every movie he's, he's taken out that he's directed, he's they've been amazing. They, yeah, they've honestly been so good. But those are two legends, though, right there, man. So. Now listen, Hope, I'm I'm going to have to get you. I'm going to have to get you right now. We had this conversation, and you said that you wasn't feeling Wandavision. You got to explain it. You got to explain yourself. 
Explain Yo, yourself, sir. You know, and I've been having this fight with everybody, by the way. <laughs> um, there's maybe somebody, I forgot who I spoke to that wasn't with. I, you know what, man? I don't know. Maybe I was expecting too much. Yeah. You know? I was I was hoping for like a cameo, like a bigger cameo. You know, I was maybe at the end. I thought like maybe Magneto yeah. would show up because, you know, Scott is which is um, father and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Since they, and since they put those two worlds together already, like with Quicksilver, um, you know, going in there from the X-Men world. Yeah. Um, I don't know, man. It was just something, it was something missing, bro. I was just watching. I was kind of like, and then the season, fin- the, the the finale. You know, you like I, the finale? I, thought was, I thought it was all right. You know, when Vision and Vision were going to get um against each other, um, I thought that was dope. But then all of a sudden it stopped because Vision's telling him a whole scientific <laughs> philosophy of all this crap. And then the philosophy, then it wasn't no, the other Vision is like, oh yeah, you know what? You're right. Then he leaves. It's like, what the <laughs> fuck? I don't know, man. <laughs> I just thought of I just thought it was I thought it was all right. I mean yeah. I enjoyed it. Don't get it twisted. I looked I looked forward to it all the time. But I guess because it's Marvel, you know Your expectation Marvel, was higher. Yeah, yeah. It it's Marvel, you know, yeah. like they they don't fail, you know. And um but I mean it was still a good show. I just feel like I don't think it was as amazing as as people thought it was, I guess. Well, you know? listen, I, I, I can definitely see your side of it. Like I'm not going to say it was like amazing, amazing. It, it, it wasn't no end game, but I oh, like no. the way they told the story a little bit. And I also like the way they they are leading into uh, Dr. Strange's movie. Yes. You know, Multiverse yes. of Madness. That that's that's going to be that's going to be really, really good. I think I think that movie may end up having a chance to be the best movie in the actual entire mcu like it has and, a yeah shot. and I, and i and i feel like that oh uh, you know dr strange the first one was really good is one of the best ones they've they've been i think yeah. Loki has been one of the best um movies out of the marvel universe but um no nah, but wandavision was good man it's just i don't you know i don't know there was a, people were bigging it up too much i was kind of like <laughs> but but you know what it's, it's the brand you know they're gonna big up the brand it's marvel but the one that they need to big up is the next one Oh, the Falcon and the Winter Soldier? You damn right. Yo, that's going to be fire. <laughs> you damn that, right. That I feel is going to be fire. I'm definitely looking. And you know me, I'm going to be emotionally invested because. Oh, no, you forget the, about it, bro. The cap, the cap is my guy, okay? Yeah, I know. But the cap <laughs> makes a cameo, bro. No, listen, if he does, <laughs> if he does, whoo, whoo. I, I don't think so, but I, I want to see how they play this u.s agent storyline out because that's a real important storyline in the uh you know the whole um sam you know saga when he becomes captain america so i definitely want to see that play out but um yeah, you know I yeah i don't yeah. yeah i don't think he'll be in it but um i think yeah. regardless though it's gonna be it's gonna be a dope show the action's well, gonna the, the action's gonna be insane yeah and i think i think they said it's gonna be like that each movie, I think you told me this, like each part is going to be like a mini film or something like that. Oh, no, you're confusing that with, I think, with um, with the Snyder Cut. Oh, yeah? They're like breaking that. Oh, no, you sent me that. I yeah, but that's what I, 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 I think I read that every, I think, because I think there's six parts to this Winter Soldier um, um, oh, yeah? thing. Oh, no, I didn't, I didn't know about this. Yeah, I think, I think every, every, every part is going to be like a mini movie. Maybe it's going to be like you know, 75 minutes long or something like that, which is pretty dope. You know what I'm oh, saying? that's dope. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see how it plays out. But I, I think it has a chance to to be really, really good. Really, really good. Disney Plus is winning, though, bro. Oh, they're winning. Yeah, yeah. They're definitely. winning. Going definitely. back to everything we talk about, like watching movies at home and all that stuff. Like, yeah. And, you know, they've been doing that with Disney Plus. They, you know, they just released a new one with the, the Raya and the Dragon or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And um, they keep making these releases too, and then these Marvel shows, like, yeah, take all my take all my money, man. <laughs> Disney Plus, right? Take, take my money, man. Damn, damn, bro. We, I don't even understand how cable still exists. How does cable still exist? Oh, Yo. just give me, give me. If I subscribe to Disney Plus, Hulu, if I subscribe to HBO Max, Netflix, uh, what's another one? Um. Yeah, now they now they got peacock. Peacock, <laughs> yeah, I, I gotta get that. I gotta get that soon. Um, all of those things still don't amount to the the cable bill that I was paying. Yeah, 
Yo, you know what I'm saying? So, like, bro. So, I, yo, I haven't had cable, I think, in four years. You're a smart man. Yo, I've cut off cable a long time ago, bro. Yeah, and, I cut off cable. I think it's been like almost two years for me. Yeah, man. It does. And whoever I know has cable, I told them cut it off. Yeah. This is like, why do you still have this? Do you have do you have a a a, a person over 75 years old in your house? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, that's the only reason why I think that you would you would have cable, you know? You, you guys gotta cut the cord on it, bro. Yeah, facts. It's just yeah, no. you know, it's ridiculous, man. Like you can't pick what you want and then they're gonna overcharge you. Like, why should I be spending two hundred and eighty dollars for channels that I don't watch? I watch like six channels. <laughs> Yo, it, it's a, it's a, it's two thousand channels, and yeah, you watch like six channels. Yeah, like my my mom still pays them for cable, and I've been t- trying to convince it like, "Yo, stop it!" You right? Know what I mean? Like, like stop! Like it's and what what did she do? She watches Netflix all day. You see what I'm saying? What you need to do is just drug her. Uh, go into her, <laughs> go into her account, get the get the number, and cancel it. Just cancel it. Cancel it. <laughs> that that's a good strategy because yo, exactly. listen. I convinced my mother and she was like, all right, well, you got to make sure that whatever I watch is available to my side. Cool. God got you. And yeah. she, she's she been happy ever since. You know what I'm saying? Uh, she hasn't missed a beat on her shows. So You drugged your mom too or no? Oh, no, nah, I didn't have to. I didn't have okay. to. All, all I had to do was kind of like show her the gun. I just, okay. <laughs> I just had to show her. Listen, just, just hear me out. <laughs> hear me out. And then, you know, after this, <laughs> that we could be able to move on. She's like, all right, cool. You know, but um, but yeah, man, it's 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 been a great investment, and everybody should definitely get off that cable wave. It's nonsense. It's yeah, for nonsense. Real. It's nonsense. For so, real. getting into what we love, sports, sir. Yes. Um, you know, the NFL is pretty interesting right now. In regards to free agency, there's a lot of people getting cut that we never thought would get cut. Uh, a lot of teams are over the cap. The Jets are not over the cap, and you're a huge Jets fan. So, you know, what are your thoughts on on so many players getting cut, so many teams trying to have to, you know, they have to restructure and get under the cap, and the wide receiver market is huge. Yeah. Like, do you think that there's going to be anybody out there that gets a big deal, and if they do get a big deal, from who? I mean, there's a. I feel like there's a good – the wide receivers, I feel like, who are available. Yeah, Galladay, Juju. Yeah, the, the Galladay is Juju. I, I feel like a lot of them are not number ones, though. So, so you think that Galladay isn't a, so? Is he a number two? He's a he's a you know what he's a borderline one and two. Yeah, yeah. You, you know what I mean? But he, you know, he he doesn't. He also has health yes. issues a little bit. You know, you got Will Fuller out there. Can't stay healthy well. to save his life. He can't stay healthy. But he's but you know when he's solid, I mean when he's healthy, he's he's good. Yeah. Um, Juju, I don't know what you know. Like for example, like the Jets, we need everybody we can get. Right. <laughs> everybody from the water boy. <laughs> you know what I mean? So the every from everybody, man. Right. But you know, Juju, I think out as far as wide receivers might be the best. Like he might get. I think he might get a payday. So do you? So do you? So. As a Jets fan, do you think that they should go after Juju or Galladay? Like, who fits better in your opinion? Well, if we, it depends on who our quarterback is. I well, mean, if we, well, right, yeah, yeah. If we have Sam Darnold, you got to go with Juju. They yeah. got, they got that connect. Yeah, you know that USC already going connection. back to college. So I would say to go with him. But I mean, I, if 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 it's not Darnold, it's still. I mean, it may be Galladay. Yeah. over him you know but either or i feel like you can't go wrong although juju left a bad taste in my mouth from last year like how he how he acted you yeah. know and the things that he was saying you know they were a bit childish and all this dancing that he was doing and oh nonsense you know i'm glad he got popped yes got yes popped, you know and he deserved it and good for him you know <laughs> next week he came out yeah i'm not dancing anymore guys. exactly you know <laughs> but no nah, i mean um but I feel like the Jets need to get – they need to land big with one of the wide receivers. Yeah. Like the Jets – we haven't had a good wide receiver in a while, you know, and a running back at that. Yeah. I mean, we need – I'm telling you, bro, we need to load up every position <laughs> possible, son. Like, the defense has always been solid. And now that we got that coach, you know. Yeah, Robert, like Robert, he's gonna, Robert Sala. Yeah, he's going he's gonna to kill it. You know, yeah. I honestly feel like he's going to kill it, and especially with the defense, 
but the offense, man, there was only so much the defense can do. And the Jets yeah. defense wasn't actually that bad this year. No, it wasn't. It wasn't. But there's only so much you can do. Like, how much do you want us to be on the field for, bro? The Jets had the worst. You know, I haven't looked up the numbers. They're the worst. They're the worst. <laughs> I do know they were the worst offense in the NFL. There's no need to look it up. They were the worst. <laughs> So, you know, and I'm a and I'm a and I'm a gambling man. You know, <laughs> you know they call me Dre Rothstein. You know, <laughs> so you know, in everything I took in spreads, pools, whatever pool I was in, as much as I love my Jets, so, <laughs> and I needed some money to make. You know, yeah. like now nah, I'm betting against the Jets. They, <laughs> like, they ain't dropping over twenty points this game. Hell they no. Drop, like, you can't like yo, their offense is terrible. So yeah, it's like yeah. we need we need wide receivers, we need running backs, we need tight ends, and all those positions. There's a lot of, there's a lot of free agents out there. Yeah, Hunter Henry's out there as a tight end. You know, Hunter you know, Henry as a tight end would be perfect. Right, you know? but but I know he, yeah. I know Zach Ertz is available. Yeah. I know Ertz is not the Ertz that, you know, but if you sign him for the low, I might take it. Yeah. But run, but no, nah, I would love Hunter Henry and running backs, man. I mean, you got Marlon Mack out there. You got a James Connor, Chris out Carson, there. And Car- Carlson. You know, um, this guy from the Packers, Adam, no, Adam Aaron Jones. Oh, Aaron man. Jones is on the market too. Yeah, he's a free agent. Although, although um, the Packers are probably, um, yeah, they'll probably pick him up anyway. But. There, yeah, Kenyon Drake, Todd Gurley, like there's like a few of them, but a Marlon, a Marlon Mack would be would be all right. He did decent with the Colts. Yeah, you, you know, all of those guys are are good dudes. It's just what it is is that they all come with their their deficiencies, right? There, there, no player on the market from any position is 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 without flaws. Like Juju. You know, is he a number one? So yeah. if, if he's not a number one, then what is his market? Like, what is he going to command? Is he going to command anything over 14 million? Because if it's four, if it's over 14 million, it's going to be really, really tough to sign a guy like that. Same thing with Aaron Jones. Aaron Jones, a talented running back, but can he stay healthy enough to, to give you what you need? You know what I'm saying? Like now as a, as a Jets fan, you know, we've heard a whole bunch of stuff about Deshaun Watson and where he's going to go. He wants out of uh, out of Houston. Do you think it would be smart for the Jets to trade for for uh, uh, Watson, or is it smart to keep Sam for another year? You know, if you would have asked me that question about two months ago, I guess, or so when the rumors started happening, man, when I heard the Sean Watson for the Jets, I ain't going to lie, man. I was like, sign me up. <laughs> like, yo, trade everybody. I don't care, you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, Deshaun Watson is is a is a top five quarterback. Yes. You know what I mean? Like he's, yo, he led the league. He led the league, um, in passing yards. Yeah. With a Brandon Cooks, a Randall Cobb, a Fuller, Kenny Stills. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like he led the league with those guys with a terrible record. You know, wide receiver, wide receiver core that had band aid and and duct tape on it, like it's it, it's it's crazy. Exactly. Yeah. Like like he's a beast, man. Like arguably, if you get him, you're arguably competitive. Like you're you you know, I'm not saying if we get the Sean, then we're we're going to the Super Bowl or damn, they're even making the playoffs. You know, but you know, like I said, if you would ask me two three months ago, I would have been like, hell yeah, let's get it. right. I remember, I remember. <laughs> but now, you know. Really thinking about it, nah, man. It'll be, it'll be a bad move, son. Because yeah, we would have to give up way too much. A everything king's we, ransom. Yeah, everything we built for, you know, all these picks we have. We have the second, I believe, highest salary <clears throat> cap yeah. space. Second, yeah, second to the Jags. Yep, second to the Jags. So like, we can't throw it away off for this one guy, man. Like. Is Deshaun would you know would be amazing, man. We can't do it. If it happens, will I be mad? Uh, <laughs> I mean, maybe. You know, <laughs> you'd be you'd be mad for like five minutes and be like, ah, all right. <laughs> you know, yeah, exactly. No but but then I'll go cop me a Watson jersey. Really, exactly, you know, exactly. Right away. But nah, man. But I, honestly, at the end of the day, man, 
you got all the tools to rebuild right now. I mean, I know we've been in the rebuilding stage since forever, but now like I love our coach. I, you know, I love the staff that he's getting, he's putting together yeah. with the team and you're in a perfect position, man, to start from scratch. And Sam Darnold, I mean, he hasn't been given, I have hope in Sam Darnold. Like I really do. We were excited when he got drafted. We were at your house. Actually, I remember. I remember. Got me yeah. and Mike was, we were, was super hyped, pounding yeah. beers and shit. But we were like, <laughs> you know, we were super hyped about it. Right. I had my leg up in the air. I remember. Yeah, you yep. had your leg up, throwing your Dallas <laughs> Cowboy hat on the floor. <laughs> but um, I like Sam Darnold, and I feel like he hasn't been given a fair opportunity. Like he's had so many different players to play with, so many different coaches. Right. To play with. And I don't want to say his name, you know. Don't say it. Don't say it. Don't say it. I don't want to say it. I refuse to say his name because ever (laughs) since he's been fired, I've never said his name again. But, ever, you know, them, he's the worst coach there's ever been in history. I I don't know. I Listen, there's Richie Kotite in Jets history. (laughs) He makes Richie Kotite look like John Madden. Yo. (laughs) (laughs) But I, I said to myself, man, I mean, you know, and I know we've spoken about this. Like, yeah. when he got hired, this man came from the Miami Dolphins. Yes. Who were pretty much what the Jets were, what the Jets are now. Like, Correct. They're terrible, you know? Yeah. And why would you hire this guy? And a then, guy that you saw two times a year. Like, you would know if he was bad or not, right? <laughs> like, I, just don't, I just don't understand it. There's no coincidence that now Ryan Tannehill is balling. Right. Somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, um, nah, man, I think Sam Darnold should, I think we should still give him a year, max two years, an opportunity to put a, you know, put a, a nice roster behind him. Yeah. And see what he can do. I mean, Hey man, we've been losing for so long, right? What's, what's, <laughs> what's another two years? <laughs> what's, an, what's another two years, really? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, nah, it's fair. That's a fair. But you, would would you believe me if I told you, Hove, that there's more Jet fans on the opposite like spectrum of that that they actually have criticized Sam and believe that it's time to draft another quarterback? Like, can you can you I it. can you you know kind of see where they're coming with that? Or do you honestly believe that if he has a better staff, better weapons around him, that he will be better? Yeah, I mean, I feel I feel people have felt like that because they're just honestly it's the losing mentality. You've just been yeah. tired of losing. Right. And all the time you lose, all the time your team is doing bad, you always blame it on the quarterback. Right. The court, you know, the quarterback throws an intercept, you know, he could go five hundred yards four touchdown and one interception and you lose the game. And then it suddenly it's the quarterback's fault. You know, they, they're always getting um, criticized the hardest. So that's for like, therefore I'm like, I get it. Why people right away would want to, you know, just give up on Darnold, but the talent, the talent is there. You know, the, the, the talent is there. Like you, you've seen a multiple games that he's actually, when he's healthy, he's, he's thrown, over 400 yards. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like with two, three touchdowns and he's had solid games. I just feel like, you know, you just need a better roster. And not for nothing, I know the Jets were beyond terrible last year. But did you see, we had hands down the hardest schedule in the whole entire, in the entire, in the whole entire league. That's the thing I, I don't understand about about the schedule sometimes is that Tom Brady's schedule was cheese, right? Oh, it's always cheese. Ew. And the poor Jets had a bad season last season or, and the, or the season before that. They come into this season, they look at their schedule and like, you got to be kidding me. Yo. Like, why, why, why do we have to play all these hard teams? We're not. Yo, the- we, <laughs> we had the worst. Yo, we had to, for one thing. Now it sucks. You know, Brady leaves our division. Yeah, and now the Bills are like <laughs> amazing. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean. So we gotta face them twice. Yeah. All of a sudden, the Miami Dolphins. Dolphins are good. Yeah. 
are, are really good. We've been waiting for the Pats for Brady to leave the Pats since forever. And now all of a sudden the Dolphins and the Bills are better than us. You it's know? just yeah, yeah. So we gotta face them. We gotta face them twice. Meanwhile, we faced we faced KC. You know what I mean? We faced the Chiefs, we faced Seattle, we faced the we faced the Chargers, we faced um, we faced um, what do you call it? The Browns. Yeah. Like, yo, our schedule was disgusting. It was disgusting. I couldn't even believe we beat the Rams. Right. We beat the Rams. Like, yo, football don't make no sense. And 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 what's crazy about that is that that win cost you guys Trevor oh, Lawrence. The Trevor, the Trevor Lawrence. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you know. know what? <laughs> like, <laughs> yo, I I laugh to avoid myself from crying. You know, like, but, you know when that happened. And then they even that game with the with the Raiders yeah. when Derek Carr threw that that hail yes, mary yes. in the last two seconds. I remember I called you because <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I was happy they lost, but I was so upset on the way the way they lost. Right, right. You know what I mean? But Conflicted. It like, it's just conflicting inf- emotions, just the ebb and flow of being a Jets fan. It's just like, all right, they lost, yes. Cause we get we get to keep that high pick, but come on now, like it's just yeah. typical, typical Jets fashion. They will lose like that. A full a full out blitz, <laughs> a full out blitz, bro. With two seconds left, like yo, and the guy Who got fired that? right away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's Greg Williams in a in a in a in a you nutshell. know just in a in a nutshell, exactly. Like he's just <sighs> that coaching staff. I, I I don't know, I don't know, man. And you know. They they got it right now. You know, Rob Asala's there. They have um Mike LaFleur, Matt LaFleur's brother as the OC. Yeah. So, you know, we'll see what happens. But I I definitely agree with you, man. I think Sam needs another shot. You cannot evaluate a quarterback fairly without seeing what he looks like when there's actually good parts around. Like if you don't have good parts around, how could you honestly say that he's that bad? Now, if you have good parts around and a guy is open and he's missing a guy four yards down the field, then now you can say, okay, this guy's missing throws. It's yeah. not the fact that guys can't get open or they're running bad routes. He's missing throws. He's causing the offensive line to, to have a uh, uh, motion or, or, or little movements, which, which is call, causing delay of games. It's the quarterback's fault. All of these things, you know, the timing is off. The offense is not flowing right. Those are things that you can be able to blame on the quarterback when the weapons are there. Yes. When the weapons aren't there, how can you say, yeah, this, this Sam Darnold guy isn't that great? Because, you know, all of this rumor we're hearing now is that with the number two pick, Joe Douglas is evaluating the quarterbacks in the draft and he'll make his decision where he's going to keep Sam or trade Sam. And it's like, the more I hear about it, the more you don't, hear somebody come out and say Sam's our guy Mm -hmm. I really believe that they're going to draft the quarterback and trade Sam so my thing is you know I've said it on my show several times Sam is 23 years old yes seen NFL defenses for three seasons he has the experience already. he has experience you're going to trade a 23 year old with a ton of talent and draft a 23 year old (laughs) I mean it yeah it just doesn't make sense. It, like, it, take the it, guy with the experience and grow with that. No, 100, 100%. And, you know, and I'll tell you right now, man, especially with the Jets look. Yeah. Sam Darnold gets traded. Where, uh, whichever, whatever team he goes to, he's going to ball. He's going to be, a, yes, he's going to be a star. He's going to be, he's going to be good. Yeah. Like, I truly believe he's going to be, he's going to be very good. Right. And, Especially with the jet slug, you know, we get rid of people and then they, you know, they do good <laughs> wherever they go, you know. Yeah. But getting another quarterback, man, that's just going to be, I don't know, man. I mean, I guess, I mean, but sometimes, you know, the shit works out. Yeah. Like getting a rookie, you know, look at Justin Herbert. Right. Stud. He's, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. he's a stud. Yeah. You know, and my man, before he got injured, the dude from the Bengals. Oh, yeah. Um, Burrow. Oh, Bur- Burrow. Straight rookie. You right. know what I mean? And they threw him in there and and he's balling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, he got hurt. But, I mean, but with the Jets luck, man, I know I sound, I sound negative, man. But, yo, it's just. You it's, know, it, I, listen, it's, 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 it's Jets PTSD. That's what they've given you. Like, yeah. you, you have that. As a Jets fan, it's like, okay, yeah, we're heading in the right direction. But, man, 
that I'm just waiting for them to screw up because that's okay. what I'm used to. Yeah, you know what I mean? Say, man, you know, he'll blow it in the ninth. Yeah, you know? right. <laughs> <laughs> like, they'll blow it in the ninth. You know? Yeah, I, I said it on my show. I think it was last week. I said, Jet going Jet. <laughs> like, that's jet, the- jet. <laughs> I did hear that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> should be on a t-shirt actually yeah, jet jet. Jet. it's just it, you it's, know i don't know man don't and that's know. exactly but now i do honestly though um i do have hope like yeah. i feel like with the coaching staff and if we make these picks right yeah you know we do some some we do good throughout the um, the free agency yeah i think we'll we'll be competitive in the yeah. next in the next few years but i yeah. like darnold i want to keep darnold um so Hopefully it happens, man. And if not, then I mean we'll go with the the next quarterback up, who you know, which 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 may be Zach Wilson. That's that's who they're looking at, the kid out of BYU. Now with the number two pick, Hov, who would you prefer the Jets to get? Would you rather keep that pick and draft like a like a, a, a an offensive tackle like a Penny Sewell, or you know we're hearing a lot of talks about um. Uh, the, the, the tight end, I can't remember his name right now. Um, but there's a freak tight end in the draft. Uh, would you rather them keep that pick or would you rather them trade out of that pick, get more assets in this draft and they'll be able to, you know, trade down and get some more stuff. Like, you know, they can be able to get another first rounder or second round or third rounder and then really be able to fill out this roster. Cause now I've said this uh, uh, a few times on my show that if the Jets play their cards, right they have a chance to really turn around their team in a year. Not saying that they're going to be a Super Bowl contender, but they'll be a better product than they've been over the last few years because they had all this draft capital as well as this cap space. So, you know, what would you what, what would you want to see them draft in the in the draft? I mean, the, the second pick always looks nice up there. Yeah. You know, like so but I wouldn't be mad if they trade the number 2. Yeah get more picks um i'm kind of focused on offense right like whether it was offensive guards wide receivers well they got that nice dude that wide receiver i forgot his name who was like arguably the best wide receiver out of college oh jamar chase um is it jamar chase is, it, is it, it's either jamar chase jalen waddle or Devonte smith there you go Devonte smith yeah it's been yeah. a like i rather go offense all the way i yeah. feel jets have always been defense, defense, defense. Yep. And not for nothing, their defense picks have always been great. Yes. You know, we've always picked up um we've always picked up great guys on defense, but I want to focus I honestly man, I want to focus on the offense. Right. Like so I would make that pick if we don't have obviously if we trade away Sam Darnold then we're going to have to get a quarterback. Yeah. That's hands down. That that first pick is gonna have to be a quarterback if we yeah. give away Darnold. But if we're not keep, but if we're gonna keep Darnold, then honestly, man, I I'd rather go all offense, man. So I, go go with a wide receiver. I will go with a wide receiver. Okay. To be honest with you. And I know, um, you know, you don't really see wide receivers get picked so high. Well, like that. I, I will tell you this, whole If there's a year that a wide receiver is going to go high, it's this year because, like I said, you got Devonte Smith, we were talking about from Alabama. You got Jalen Waddle. Jalen Waddle was Devonte was the number one receiver in Alabama. Once he got hurt, that's when Devonte Smith took off. Gotcha. So Jalen Waddle is actually just as good as Devonte Smith, wow. which is scary. And then yeah. you also have Jamar Chase, who opted out last year, and he was a freak the year before that. Mm. So you got three of these guys up there that are insane. Like J- uh, Jamar Chase has a chance to be the next Hall of Fame wide receiver. Oh wow! Like, where you just look at him, and you're like, yeah, that dude is legit. Like, like he's gonna be ninety catches out of the gate for fifteen hundred yards in his rookie season. He has that type of potential. There you go, man. Give me him. Yeah, he, I'm that. telling you, man. He <laughs> he is a freak. And like, and the, the tight end that I was telling you about. Kyle Pitts, that's his name. Oh, okay. That guy, 6'6, 245, freak of nature. Mm. Freak of nature. And I'm mm. telling you right now, Dallas, if you if you're listening, uh, here he goes with the number 10 pick. <laughs> if Kyle Pitts is on the board, you take him. I don't care if we need defense. We you draft him. You will figure it out later. Draft him. Okay. 
<laughs> well, you already know, man. Cowboys, Cowboys is my favorite team out of that division, bro. So I'm Cow- not. Cow- Cowboys are your sleeper team. They're always your secret Yo, team. They, they, they are my sleeper team. I'm not even gonna hold you up, man. We're, I'm saying it on all even. I don't care who's listening, man. <laughs> Cowboys is my second team. Like, I don't care what anybody <laughs> says, bro. And, yeah, it has to do a lot with the 90s. Right. You know, just see it. Emmett Smith, Troy Aikman, Michael yep. Irvin. Yep. I mean, Dion, like. like who, who, who didn't like the Cowboys back then, who right? Who didn't like the Cowboys, son? Right, like, right. Yeah, I've always liked the Cowboys, and it's just like, you know, I don't like I don't like any other team in that division. So, right. Damn know. sure don't like the Eagles. No, no, no. Damn nah, sure yeah. don't like the Giants. No, 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 no. Yo, you know what? I'll tell you something about the Giants, man. Uh, I actually had this combo recently. Oh, you would I actually think um, yeah, you were having it with Bishop. Yeah. At some interview about Daniel Jones. Yes. I think he's trash, man. <laughs> Yo, I I don't think he's the guy. Like, he is not the guy. I like, don't think so either, man. I don't I think, think so. Sam Darnold is better than Daniel Jones. I think I think Daniel Jones has a better arm than Sam. Okay. I think that Sam Darnold. Sam Donald might be a little smarter than Sam. Uh, uh, Sam. He might be a little smarter than Daniel Jones because yeah. Daniel Jones, man, his his I think his 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 hands are little, yeah. and that's why <laughs> that's why he fumbles the ball a lot, you know. Well, and he, it, yeah, rest, man. right, exactly. He got that. <laughs> Let me use my strong hand. That's how, <laughs> that's how he looks. Better use my strong hand, like you know. But as a quarterback, if he doesn't, if he can't hold on to the football. There's no sense of having him as your quarterback because he'll always be a liability. So if they can't figure out a way for him to, to hold on to that football, they, they're going to have to move on. Nah, man, he he. I honestly think he's terrible. Like I, <laughs> I don't think he's good at all. I yeah. think the Giants, their their offense would have been decent if they if if they had a better quarterback because their wide receiving core is not that bad. No, you it's know? not terrible. It's not terrible. It's not. It's not terrible. It's better than the Jets. I mean, and, then again, that's not a lot. Ain't a lot. There's but, a high school team down the road that's better than the Jets. Yeah, exactly. So, look <laughs> <laughs> varsity blues, bro. They're you know, <laughs> but um, yeah. I mean, but I don't think Daniel Jones is the guy over there. Like, they need to get rid of that guy. I mean, yeah. as long as they have him, I don't care. Keep losing. I mean, yeah, better, right, better right, right. <laughs> better for us, you know. Now, but yeah, man, I, I'm a Cowboys fan over there, so I hear you if they get that tight end, man. Shout, shouts to Dallas, man. Shouts to my Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> now, you know, on the Dallas tip. What are your thoughts on? Uh, the, I already know what you're gonna say. Go ahead. The Dak Prescott contract. Like, what w- what are your thoughts on that, man? Yo, man, they these contracts and guys, man, they be just giving out money, bro. Monopoly like, money, bro. Monopoly money. But I am super surprised on that contract. Yeah. Because I mean, we all saw what happened to Dak. That injury was bad, bro. Yep. That was that was really bad. And leg on backwards. Yeah, his leg was backwards. And I think Romo said he thought he caught a cramp. Did you see that? Like, <laughs> yeah. he's like, oh, I think he caught a cramp. They're like, what are you talking about, bro? You crazy? But um, nah, but Dak um, he that that's a lot of money for somebody who's especially for somebody who's coming off that type of injury. Yeah. Like, I mean, is he gonna be available in he, the beginning of the season? They said I think he's going to. I think they said that he'll be ready for the start of the season, but I don't think that they want to throw it out there like that yet. So I, I you know, he's he's ahead of schedule, but you know, they still got to be a little cautious in regards to um how they how they go forward with with announcing that he'll be ready. And if he's not ready, then it's going to be a problem. But I, yeah. I think I think he'll be fine. You know, OTAs and training camp. You know, he may he may be slow there. So we'll see. We'll see. I mean, you saw you saw the difference though. When Dak's not playing, yeah, like you put in Andy Dalton, and every player, yo, look at Zeke. Look how Zeke was playing. Like Zeke, Zeke listen, Zeke was playing like that even the season before that. that uh, don't don't blame this on <laughs> Dak not being there. Okay, don't don't you do. No, it. But I will say they were playing better with Dak on the field, man. Uh, no, they were, no, they weren't. They were, no, they weren't. They, they were, were playing. Be- they, they were playing were better with Dak. One that. and three when he went down. Okay, one and three, and the only game that they lost was because the Falcons are the worst defensive team in the football that they can't hold leads. They could be up 52 to three, and they will we, lose. Yes. They will lose. Yes. 
We've, so we've seen that with the Falcons, yeah. Right. So think about it. If 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 they would have lost that game to the Falcons, Dak Prescott and the Cowboys would have been 0-4. And he mm. would have thrown all of these yards. He's thrown the most yards in a four-game span in NFL history. Yeah. What does it mean? We play fantasy together. We know how this is. Yeah. It's all stat padding. Yeah. When you're down 30 points, you have no choice but to throw the ball on every down. Yeah, and let if it fly. Team, right. And if the team is up 30. They're going to sag off coverage. They're not going to play pre- yeah. like you know, like uh, blitz and do all that stuff. They're gonna they're gonna play it easy. They're gonna give you the underneath stuff. They're not gonna give up anything over the top, and that that's just the way it is. So he'll compile a whole bunch of yards, but it's all garbage yards. It's all garbage. One hundred percent. I mean, I do feel Dak being back. I, I they're they're still the best team in that division. Yeah, but I agree. What, but what? But what does that mean, though, at the end of the day? Because you still you're gonna have to deal with Tampa Bay. Oh God, you know what I mean? Like, and, and Tom Brady just agreed to a new contract extension. He's taking like six dollars, six dollars, <laughs> <laughs> six dollars, so everybody else can get paid. It's just I'm sick. And that's what separates him from everybody else. Yes, and, you know and what that's I mean? that's what that's and that's what, why he wins. Exactly. It, it, it's amazing to me, Hov, how people could be like, man. Tom Brady, he wins again. <laughs> Bro, he takes $6. What do you think he's going to do? His teams are stacked because he doesn't kill you financially. Yo, he's like never been the hot. Tom Brady, we're talking never. about Tom Brady, arguably the GOAT, um, has never been the highest paid player. On never. The never been the highest paid quarterback at any point in the league ever. Bro, I think that- he's probably been maybe top 10 once or yo. twice, bro. We're about, and we're talking about Brady. We're talking yo. about Brady here. Yo, that's insane. But see, but the reason why Brady can do that is because he is like Kevin Federline, right? He has, he, <laughs> he can be able to just sit home and cool out because Giselle Bunchen is worth a billion dollars. So he can be like, all right, just give me $6. I'm <laughs> fine with that because I don't, I don't need it. And, 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 and listen, shots to Tom Brady too. His endorsements are like $90 million off the field. So he knows yeah. like, business-wise, he understands that I make all of this big money off the field. My wife makes all of this big money yeah. you know, in her profession and all that stuff. Why should I kill my team financially when yeah. I could be able to just give back, you know, I'll make $15, $20 million or so. I'm fine with that. And give the rest of the team. That's smart business. Yeah, so man. For everybody to look at Tom Brady like, I don't know how he does it. That's how he does it. Yeah. He realized that I am not as talented as as, uh, as Peyton Manning. I don't have the Hall of Fame talent like Peyton Manning. But business-wise, I'm going to be the best winner that ever played this game. Smart. Yeah. He's just smart. Yeah. And he's proven it. And you know what? And and we never learn. Right. You know, we never, ever learn. And no Always count them out. Yeah, we always count them out, and every quarterback look, they don't learn either. Yeah, you know? they want to take all that money. I mean, right. you know, look at the whole Russell Wilson right situation. You know, he's been he's been emptying out the Seahawks' pockets, since right? God knows when, but he never wants to make any adjustments and take any cuts. There you go, there you go. And now you can play. Oh, I want out of Seattle. Well, well how about you give some money back so they could be able to give you a better offensive line. Yeah, because guy's been got, running around all his career. They got no money over there. They, well, well, and they draft terribly. They draft oh, yeah. terribly. So it's it's like a little bit of both in Seattle. But yeah, it's like with this Dak contract, okay, I, I am, every, every time I criticize the contract or how much money they're supposed to give him, everybody says, you're not a Cowboys fan. On the contrary, I am a Cowboys fan. I am not a Dak Prescott and the Dallas Cowboys fan. I root for Dallas. So I don't care who the quarterback is. It's about, like, you know, making sure the team has the assets that they need to win. And you yeah. giving a quarterback $40 million is not going to help you win. That's all oh, I'm man. saying. Because think about it. We just saw the Chiefs. They're, they're like, I think they were like $20 million over the cap. They had to cut their two offensive linemen. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, what's his name? Patrick Mahomes restructured some money around. So now they got some cap space, but now they 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 don't have their linemen. We're gonna see how the Chiefs look next year because they they were missing those two guys in the uh, in the Super Bowl, and you saw what yep. what what yeah, what, what a difference like. they made. Yeah, so it's like 
and, and going forward, this guy's going to be making $45 million a year. How are they going to be able to fill this team out? Hopefully they can keep drafting well, because if they don't, they are screwed. They're screwed. Yeah. No, 100%. I would have liked, I would have, um, I would have loved to see, honestly, Russell Wilson go to, to the Cowboys. Oh, my goodness. Listen, you saw my, I don't know if you saw my <laughs> IG post where I was, I was throwing out the Dak, the, the, the Dak hat and putting in the rust. I, I was praying for that. I was praying for that. And I yo. was like, yo, listen, I, not for nothing, I would have let Dak walk and I would have called Ryan Fitzpatrick. Give me some Fitz magic in Dallas for a year. I'd have been fine with that. I'd have been fine with that. Yeah, I, man, Fitz Fitz magic's the man, bro. Yes. I, I love I love Fitz magic, man. Like <laughs> when it goes down, all said and done, when this all goes down, man, I hope he's a Hall of Famer. Right, I know right. He, I know he's thrown three three thousand interceptions. He has no shot. <laughs> 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 Yo, but he's for the people, man. Yo, he's he's awesome. Listen, he's... I'll tell you who's Hall of Fame. He's definitely in. Shouts to Basco. Shouts to Basco. <laughs> he's definitely in Basco Hall of Fame. I have never seen a guy love replacement quarterbacks as much as Basco does. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, always, always. It's so true. It's so true. That's why he loves um the replacements. Sean yes, Fal- Shane Falco. Yeah, man. Yeah. Like he he. He loves that. Like he was a big uh uh Hoyer fan for years. I'm like, why? <laughs> it's all right. He was rooting for him all the time. Like, yo, bro, all this dude, the time. This, this dude is trash. Like, yo, he, he be rooting for the third string, fourth string quarterback. All man. the time. Like, I don't understand it. Like, even even when the um what was that quarterback's name that was on the Jets, man? He had got a chance to start. Didn't play not, that well. Not Gino. Not Gino, man. Um, McCown. Not McCown. What's his name? I, got, I see. I, I'm gonna have to look it up now. Um, but yeah, that guy. He was. He wasn't. He wasn't. He, was, he was bad. He was terrible. He was terrible. Mike's like, yo, man. They didn't give him a shot. Yes, they did give him a shot. He was bad. <laughs> like, come on, man. What are we doing what they, here? What they all say about him, though, man, is that he. Every year he has very high hopes for the Jets. He yo shouts the bat. He is he every, is very optimistic. Every, like we always talk, we always talk about it. And he is one of those guys like this is the year. <laughs> like this, he's one of those guys like this. And I am the guy who's kind of realistic. I'm like, dog, like we're gonna suck again, you know. But, but you're listen, he, you're not as bad, you're not as bad as Brandon. Shouts to Brandon, but no, no, you're not no, as bad no. as Brandon. He's, Brandon he's, is the worst, he's the, the worst. worst. He's the worst fan for any sport, bro. He, he dogs the Jets. He dogs the Yankees. He dogs the Knicks. Every team, bro. He he has no hope in any team. Yeah, yeah. Oh That's funny. God. But nah, man, if Russell Wilson would have gone to the Cowboys, man, that would have been that would have been nice, man. But Dak, let me let me see what happened. But like we said, he's gonna he's def- they're definitely the best team in that division. Yes. Hands down. Um, but you know, there's still a lot of teams that in the NFC that are they're not better than a lot of other teams in the NFC. Yeah, I don't think that they're better than the Packers. I don't think that they're better than the Bucks. But other than that, honestly, I think the NFC is wide open. I think it's yeah. I think it's gonna be wide open next year. So you know we'll see what happens. But uh you know transitioning to basketball. Ooh. You know you 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 are you are a big basketball fan. You 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 love the sport and you're a Chicago Bulls fan which makes me nauseous. All so, day you know, what are your thoughts on your Chicago Bulls? You know, how they look this season? And do you honestly feel that, um, you know, they have a chance to make the playoffs? Or is this like one of those tra- uh, transitional years where they're getting, they're moving in the right direction to kind of have some sustained success, you know, down the, down the line, like two, three years down? From, uh, I feel um, it's a little bit of both. Honestly, I feel like if they make the playoffs, they'll be that eighth seed. Yeah seventh eighth seed i mean right now they're in 11th place yeah but that's only because the east is like if tomorrow they win a game they'll go from 11th to eighth place right (laughs) they'll go from 11 to two (laughs) yeah exactly (laughs) like that's how the east is right now yeah but honestly i like the direction they're taking and i think a lot of it has to do with their coaching right um i do do like billy Billy. fine okay i'm a billy Donovan fan i i like it um, I think he had success with OKC, yeah. and his most impressive actually um, year was last year. 
Yeah. Um, with Chris Paul was playing. I don't even know who else was on that Chris, OKC team. With. Chris Paul and the and the replacements. Yeah, pretty much. You know, <laughs> but they had a solid. They had a solid. Um. Yeah. They had a solid run, and I believe. Yeah. yeah, they made the playoffs. They got eliminated by the Rockets. Right. And they went to Game Seven actually with the yes. Rockets. I remember. But Billy Donovan's good, man, and I feel like. With the talent we have, we have a bunch of young players. I mean, I do feel like we're still a few pieces away. I feel every, every besides Zach Levine, who's playing his best basketball ever. Yeah. Um, every player, there's a good amount of players there that they're very. We have a whole bunch of role players. Yeah. That's that's what it is. We have a lot of guys that can come off the bench on any other team and be really solid. So I feel like we're still like a superstar or two away, you know? But I like the direction. Zach Levine's balling. Hopefully we keep him. Yeah. Um, you know, but um, I like Markinen as well, although he stayed injured. Um, but Kobe White. Co- Kobe White, man. That t- Kobe. is a talented kid. La Flama Blanca. <laughs> you know he's been he's been balling like yeah i like him and, and they've they've drafted well because even you know um pat williams has been doing he's been decent pat, pat williams is a great defender yep pat williams has been doing defense wendell carter's all right i like know? wendell carter i think i think wendell carter i don't know i'm still trying to figure it out if he's a legit starter or he can be a really really good guy off the bench you and know. yeah, and that's what it, and that's what I mean with, with them. Like they're all guys that I feel like they're all role players. Yes. None of them are none of them are dominant. You right. know, like they're all a bunch of they're all role players. So um, but I'm excited for them, honestly. I just we just need to pick up, you know, make some make some moves, man, and free agency and do like that. We haven't made major moves in a while. The last yeah. time was the Zach Levine trade that we gave up Jimmy Jimmy Butler and yes. some picks as well. But I like the direction they're taking. And honestly, if they don't make the playoffs this year, I do feel like in the next two, three years under Billy Donovan, I think they're going to be, I think they're going to be all right. Yeah, man. You know, I, I, I had questioned the move when they hired Billy Donovan and I was like, Hey, I, I'm, I wasn't a, I'm not a big Billy Donovan fan or prior, but this year I like what he's done. I think, I think he's doing a great job with these kids. I think he, you know, they they have a good staff there that's developing these guys well. I think, you know, for them to, for Chicago to take that step that you need, they need Kobe White to to limit his turnovers. If his turnovers yeah. go down, I think this kid can be really, really special because he's fast. He can he can he can score. You know, he can split the defense. He he can do a lot of stuff, but. He has to learn how to cut those turnovers down. For you to be the lead guard and you're 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 turning over the ball like that, it's 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 going to be damaging for your team. But they got a bright future, man. They really do. And I think that you know this draft is going to be good. I think the draft after this is going to be good as well. So you know there's some there's some some talent they can be able to pick up. So they may not have to purchase a big time free agent. They yeah. may end up getting a guy in the draft that they can be able to say, okay, this is the guy, you know what I'm nah. saying? So, you know, that, that's, I think that's, that's the best path for Chicago. You know, they're, they're a, they're a big market team, yeah. but they don't operate like one, you yeah, know what I mean? True. And, mm-hmm. um, and that's fine. You know, that's okay. They, they don't have to go out there and try to poach the big talent. So, yeah. it, it, you know, because they, if you think about the the baby bulls era with with, with Derrick Rose and Joe and Joakim Noah, like they yeah. built that team through the draft, and they, they, they ended up did. they ended up being very very good. Kirk Heinrich, you know, uh, Luol Deng, and, yeah, and all Car- those guys. Yeah, yeah, Carlos Boozer. Yeah, shots of Carlos Boozer with the spray on uh, uh, hairline. <laughs> you know, <laughs> every time you saw you saw Boozer start the game, it was jet black by the second quarter. <laughs> <laughs> Mad spots in that halo. I'm like, what, what's going on? Here, man? <laughs> uh, his, his his beard would frustrate me. Though. Disrespectful. Like, it was very it was very disrespectful. But he played good. He yeah, played, yeah. He, had, nah, he just played. Good. He played no defense at all, though. That's nah, why. He, he, he was. But in the fourth guy. quarter, always sat him down. Right. <laughs> always sat him down. I'll, yo, he would be the lead scorer on that team. Uh, fourth quarter comes. It's like Boozer on the bench, bro. No parts of you in the fourth quarter. <laughs> oh man! But what what are your thoughts also on the um 
on the Brooklyn Nets? Do you think that the Nets are the team to beat in the NBA? 100%. Mm-hmm. To be honest with you. Um, you know, I I felt when they got um when they signed James Harden, um, I was like, all right, I'm seeing a whole Miami Heat thing that's yeah. about to start happening, you know, that their first year they can't really get it together. Yeah. You know, and then they orig- then they get it together, go to the finals, lose in the finals, you know. But they're they're the team, I honestly feel they're the team to beat, bro. I mean, that trio is probably the best trio you'll will ever see. Yes. Like, um, I mean Harden, Kyrie, and Durant, like that like who who you gonna double team on that? O- offensively, it's the it's the it's the craziest thing I've ever seen in basketball. Like I, yes. I never thought I would see something like this. So I, I definitely agree with you. And say what you want about Kyrie Irving, who I call the the Kanye West of the NBA. <laughs> um, he, he's um, yo, he balls, man. Yeah, like he balls, you know. And James Harden, the role that he's decided to play, I feel like he's playing right. even better basketball. Play, he's you know? playing the point guard position. Yeah, he's playing the point guard. He's and he's playing awesome. And but you know, we know James Harden in the playoffs. That collar gets tight. <laughs> <laughs> You know, but they're 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 the favorites. They should hands down go to the NBA finals. Right. I feel like, especially now, I don't know what happened with Embiid. I know Embiid got hurt. I don't know yeah, how serious he, the he, injury no, is. It's it's not it's not too serious. It's a um I think they said it's a bone bruise, so he'll be out for like two to three weeks. So he'll be okay. he'll be back. Yeah. But that's good. That's good news because I I hate to see players yeah go down like that. But um, yeah, I mean they 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 have to make it to the finals. They have to. And I'm not even going to say win, you know. They just got to get there. They have to get there. Right. If they don't get there, then, bro, the noise, the what they're going to hear. Like, it, the, they have to make it. So there's no other There's no other words. And and if the Lakers don't, and if, the, if they do make it, I mean, originally I thought the Lakers would go to the finals, but there's no Anthony Davis. There's no shot that the Lakers are going to the finals. Agreed, agreed. So maybe the Clippers. I know that's don't, your don't you don't you don't you ever squad, but... say that again. <laughs> don't you ever, ever in your life say that the Clippers and finals in the same sentence may even makes sense. No, no, no. Yeah, I said that just to get into your skin a little bit about the Clippers. <laughs> I don't think they're going to go there, but um, <laughs> but now, nah, man, the Nets, uh, the Nets are favorites, man. Like, yeah, they, I mean, obviously, their defense is terrible. Um, I don't know what Blake. If Blake Griffin can give them 10, 15 points off the bench. Which he can. I, I believe he, he can. can. Yeah. And give them, you know, and if he can give them, you know, um, some rebounds and play a little D, then it can go a long way, you know. Yeah, but defense defense, and Blake Griffin don't agree. They, they, that's they, the other they, thing. Blake Griffin don't play no defense. No, no, no. Dude, that stat that he hasn't dunked. In two years? <laughs> Yo, that's insane. Which all you knew, all he knew how to do was dunk. Right. And now he hasn't dunked in two years. I don't even know how that makes sense. I I don't I don't know what he has left, but if he does have anything left, coming off the bench with this offensive team will help him the most. Because yeah. Because I think, I think if there was any other team that was looking for like instant help, where he had to be a starter and play thirty plus minutes, you were going to be disappointed. I yeah. think in that situation with Brooklyn, they can be able to ease him in, control his minutes, see what he can be able to do. And because they're not, you know, they're not paying him a, a, a huge salary. This They're only paying him like the vet men. So it's like, you know, if it works out, great. If it doesn't, then they can be able to cut ties and see what they can be able to get in free agency. But, you know, we'll see what he has left. I don't know how much he does because he yeah. just looks like a, an eroding talent. Like, you know, his body has given up on him a little bit in regards to athletically. He was never a great defender, even when he was jumping over people. And now, yeah. you know, he don't have, his legs are not there. He's not going to be able to keep up with anybody. So, you know, the Nets still have big concerns for me. Even, you know, a Bishop said it last week that they still need a rebounder. They still need a shot yeah. blocker. They, they, you know, they, they still need these things. So we'll see what the, uh, the, the 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 buyout market you know gives them because Drummond wants to leave Cleveland. Cleveland was, doesn't want to buy him out. 
but they're not finding any trade partners because of his salary. And he's going to be a free agent after this season. So there's not a lot of teams that are going to be like, yeah, we'll trade for Drummond and give you all of these stuff when it's not a guarantee we're going to be able to resign him. Yeah. So, you know, it, they're, they're really in a tough place in regards to Cleveland because if he's bought out and he goes to the Nets hole, I'm telling you right now, it's a wrap. I am writing a letter to Adam Silver. <laughs> I'm going to say, I can't even do this in the video game that you guys sign off on. So how is this, how, how, how can this happen in real life when I can't even do this in the video game? I can't get drumming for $2 in the video game. I can't yeah. do that. I got to trade everything to go get him. It Yo, don't make bro. sense. And it's crazy. There's a possibility that it can happen. Yes. Like that, that can happen. And they even, and, and Spencer did what he looks like. He, you know, he is, he is working out like the Terminator just to get back. Like, just <laughs> Yo, stay away. Stay away. Exactly. Yo, imagine, like, I mean, obviously, maybe he ain't going to come back, like, you know, 100%. But, I mean, I think he should sit it out. He should. But if he comes back, man, and comes off the bench, plays a little 15, 20 minutes, mm, I don't know. I, I'm <sighs> Brooklyn. Uh, you know, I, I, listen, I'm all bandwagon with Brooklyn. <laughs> I got no team in New York. You already know me. I can't stand the Knicks. Yes, yes. And so if the Brooklyn Nets can win a chip for the Knicks, yeah. Oh man, oh, I'll die a happy man, bro. <laughs> I would, I'll be so. <laughs> but you know what's crazy is that the Brooklyn Nets will let's say if they won a championship. Yeah. Right. That back page of the newspaper, it'll still be the headline of something happening with the Knicks. Yeah, of course. Of and course. the Brooklyn Nets will get that little the little ticker at the bottom. Spice in the bottom. Yeah, you know, Nets, space in the bottom. That's NBA champions. That's <laughs> NBA champions. Congrats. You know. Now <laughs> what are you doing? Not allowed for the third time in the stadium. You know. Yeah, let's talk about that. Oh like, man. What was that? Bro, I mean, all right. In all fairness, security is security, right? Yeah. I mean, listen, I don't know how it, it works, you know, at, at these arenas. But I mean, you do kind of get, need to stop everybody, right? You do need to check yes. everybody. And you know what? I'm sorry. I know Patrick Ewing is, you know, one of the greatest Knicks ever. You know, the garden, you know, the garden is his home. Yeah. But Patrick Ewing, like, you know, that was back in, like in the 90s. That's what I'm saying. Like, what if this, what if this, like, like what if these security guards are like 19, 20, 24? Big, big, Exactly. They, they it's, not like, play. it's not like they train you for the position and they 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 even like, hey, by the way, like this man right here. You don't don't right check here, him. You 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 don't check him. You have right. to let him in, you know, no matter what. Yeah. Like, no, man, these could be young guys and they don't know who the hell Patrick Ewing is. Right. You know? So I mean, I get it. It's it's Patrick Ewing, it's the garden. Like, but I don't know. I feel like security's doing their job. Like, yeah, I, I do. I, 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 I see both sides of it. You know, I'm a Pat fan. I don't like when Pat gets mad. So, you know, I'm going to like, you know what, Pat, he's right. <laughs> he's right. Yeah, I don't care what happens, Pat's right. But, yeah. you know, I see it. It's like if the dude is 27 years old and this is his job, like, I've never seen you play, bro. <laughs> like, yeah. Right? I've probably seen you when you had the, the ice on your knees yeah. and you were just sitting there on the sideline. Like, I don't remember you playing, man. So yeah. it's like, it's just... You know, sometimes guys got to gotta kind of take a step back. Like, just kind of look outside of yourself a little bit and be like, all right, these guys are doing their job or whatever, and it is. I mean, yeah, I mean, Pat, not for nothing, you know, Pat, you was probably holding on to the 90s. Yeah. You know, he's like, man, hey, I am the garden, you know. Like, why should I ever get text? Bro, I was like 30 years ago or, yeah. or something, you know. But then again, it's like, if Derek Jeter walked it, was walking to Yankee Stadium, would he get checked? That that's a good question. That's a good. You know question. what I mean? Would Derek Jeter? Would Would Tom Brady get checked at in in Gillette Stadium? That's a good question. That's see that that's 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 good right there. Yeah, that's yeah, that's fair. That's fair. But I mean, we know that that James Dolan is just, you know, he he maybe he should be giving his security guards these guys to say, hey, listen, when this guy comes in, like give him give him a plus treatment. You know what I mean? Like don't make him feel like. You know, you guys are trying to cuff him. Like this is this is Patrick Ewan, but yeah. we know that James Dolan doesn't do that. So you know, it, it's just typical garden behavior. It's always something with James Dolan in MSG. Like it's just 
it's a house of horrors. That's what it is. That's it, yeah. that's what it is. So you know, I mean, I feel like I know this maybe sounds a little crazy, but like, I think it sounds crazier to stop, um, to stop um, Spike Lee than to stop Patrick Ewing. Mm. Like Spike Lee is a regular. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you shouldn't stop Spike Lee. Right. Like, you, you should let Spike Lee use whatever friggin' elevator he wants to use. Exactly. It's like, Spike Lee. He's he's there every well used to be every single game. Right. You, you if you that. give if you give Spike Lee the keys to the garden and say lock up after you yeah. can you can you can make you you can almost guarantee that nothing will be stolen, nothing exactly. will be out of place. Spike Lee loves that place like his own home. So it's exactly. like. So you, you you know you gotta you gotta treat your legend like that's the, it's like the staples. They would never treat Jack like that. No, they no. would never treat Jack like that. Never. They'd see Jack and be like, "Hey, Jack, you want to use the other? You want to you want to use the players' elevator? Go ahead, it's Jack." Yeah, exactly. Yes. And so, honestly, if Jack if Jack came up at Staples Center with a gun, they'd probably still let him pass. They'd be like, "Jack, Jack, listen, just give me it the gun. Jack. Hand me the gun. <laughs> We're gonna, you can check it in, but you know, just, just yeah. you go ahead, go ahead. You're good. We'll give it to you at the, we'll give right. it to you at the end of the game. You're right? good. You just We're not gonna tell anybody. Yeah. you know, it's it's all good, Jack. Yeah, just just put it put it in the draw. Put it in the draw. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. I'll, I'll clean off your fingerprints. All right. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but what, yeah, but yeah. I know, but my bad. I know, I know it sounds disrespectful with the whole stopping Pat Ewing, but you know, like we said, I don't know how old the security guards are. Yeah. And like, and all that. And you can't just expect because you're Patrick Ewing, you're able to walk into the garden whenever you want. And I know right. it sounds a little blasphemous, but it's kind of like, it is what it is, man. You know? Yeah. 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 Nah, did you, it's and, fair. And Patrick Ewing, did you win any? Did you win any rings? Oh, come on, man. That's a low blow. Come on, don't, don't do that. Oh, come on. Did come you win on. any rings in the garden? That is I mean, not his fault. It could, have been his fault. A, you know, it could have been a security guard who was very petty. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, oh, you missed that layup? Nah, man. He said, you yo, that's, that the, layup? that's the dude that got his ass kicked by Hakeem in 94. Yeah, no, 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 no. Don't let him in. Don't let him in. I've been, I've been training for this moment all my I, life. I've been waiting for this. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm not letting this man in no matter what. <laughs> oh, uh, now what are your thoughts on the lakers and anthony davis do you think that anthony davis will come back being the anthony davis of old or do you think that this can be an issue going forward they should sit him out to be honest with you the whole season the season wow it's because anthony davis has that history he's, he's mr glass man He's he's Mr. Glass, man. And yeah. from the sounds of this injury, like it sounds like, you know, very similar. I don't know you guys, you know, you guys have spoken about it before. KD. That Kevin Durant. Yes. You know I mean? Yes. Watch him come back. He'll ball. And then that one little bad movement. All right. Now you're out for a year. Right. That that's exactly how I feel, Hove. It's like, you know, you, you hear this calf strain and look. They evaluated him and they said, oh, okay, we're going to, we're going to evaluate him or reevaluate him in another two weeks. I said it from day one. If you remember me saying this on my show a couple of weeks ago, I said, when they said that he was going to be out, everybody was like, oh, it was going to be two to four weeks. I said, no, 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 more like six to eight weeks. He's going to be out. Mm. I know this injury, like the back of my hand, mm. calf strain, all of that, all of that stuff is connected. So if the Achilles is, isn't ripped where they can see, it's going to feel like a calf strain because the Achilles is and all of that stuff is attached. Yeah. Just like KD. Oh, yeah, you know, it's a calf strain. You could be able to play. And as soon as he started juking, you saw that thing snap. Pow! That was it. Damn That's man. what I feel is going to happen to Anthony Davis. Like, I'm a Lakers fan, and I'm dreading because I, I'm already – I'm already looking at like the next year and a half as like we're not gonna have Anthony Davis. We're not gonna have him. It's a it's a it's a possible chance, man. I feel yeah. I feel I don't know. I with his history, I feel like they to to be on the safe side, man, don't play him. And yeah. you know, the Lakers are still gonna make the playoffs. Right. And LeBron is LeBron. You can never count LeBron on out, excuse me, no matter what team he's on, you know. Um, obviously, like I said earlier in the show, if Lakers don't have Anthony Davis, there's no shot. They're not going, yeah. they're not going to the finals. 
But um, with Anthony Davis, man, they, they have to be very careful, bro. They have to think about it very hard. And I don't, I don't, I feel in a way they shouldn't play him, man. But, I agree. I I definitely agree, man. It's or if just... he plays, I guess limited minutes. Yeah. You know? But does he come back playing like the Anthony Davis? You know. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And you know what? And maybe you'll hate me for this or whatever, but I don't care. <laughs> um. Last year, you know, which, you know, I don't care what anybody says, you know, the Asterix Trophy. Come on, don't do that. Don't do it. Um, Yo, if Anthony Davis didn't have that, was it two-month, three-month break? Uh-huh. You know, before the NBA came back and they played in the bubble? Yes. I don't think Anthony Davis would have played the whole entire season and they would have gone to a championship and all that. It's listen. It's very possible. You you can definitely say that due to his you know his injury history that he may have not been available because of the wear and tear. But you, listen, he got hurt a lot that season and he mm-hmm. played through it. So yeah, I mean you know the rest definitely helps. So I, I can't I can't disagree with you. I can't say oh no nah, no nah, nah. listen. Nah. But here's the here's my other point. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> we got the chip. Oh, it no. don't matter. Hey, okay? hey, I get it. Listen, that was if that was my squad, bro. The Bulls. I don't care. Call it an asterisk right. or not. It is a chip. You it's a mean? chip. It's it number. Down. It's number seventeen, and I'm all right with that. Yeah, okay? man. So I, you know, nah, man. But they have to. They have to be careful with the situation, man. Yeah. I think. I think in a way they should maybe sit them out, bro. Cause yeah, I'm with you. Um, I don't know. I mean, so you feel the same way that they should sit yeah, him out? Yeah, I I am very, very wary, man. I, I just don't – I don't feel good about it. I just – like, every time I see an update about him, I'm just like – I just shake my head. I'm like, I don't feel good about him stepping on the court again. I just don't. You know what I mean? Like, feel, I really don't. Is there, is there anybody, like, the Lakers can pick up right now, like, to make a move? They're, they are so cap-strapped right now that it's tough, man, because – they're still in negotiations with with locking up Dennis Schroeder. They want to re-sign him. Um, mm. You know, the only guy that I can be able to see who might be available in regards to a trade is is uh, Taylor Thornton Tucker, and you're not trading that kid. Mm-hmm. You're not trading him. Like, it's, you know, the only way that they can be able to improve is through that buyout market. But they're also, they're lo- they're, they're also looking at some trade situations. Like, they're looking at um, Mo Bamba. They're looking at Hassan Whiteside. They're looking at um, bringing back JaVale McGee, which is ridiculous because you shouldn't have got rid of him in the first place for yeah. Marcus Gasol. Laker Nation right now is upset with Marcus Gasol. They've been upset with him since day one. I was like, listen, give it a chance. Let's see how it works. It's been a failure. Disaster. Yeah, um, I'll be honest. I haven't been paying attention much to Mark Gasol on that team. And I guess if I haven't seen any news about Marcus Gasol, I guess he's been very awful. 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 I mean, he hasn't been relevant at all. But Awful. that's kind of crazy because Marco Sol is, I mean, I know he's older now, but Marco Sol's already, he's always been pretty decent. Yeah, pretty, good. pretty decent like three years ago. The man's 36, 37, and he looks 36, 37. He can't move. He can't block. Sh- well, he's blocking. I think he's blocking like 1.3 sh- uh, shots a game. So he can still block shots, but laterally he can't move. And the thing was killing the Lakers this year is they're getting killed on the rebounds. They're also getting killed in regards to guys attacking the rim and they're getting killed in pick and roll because their big men can't handle the pick and roll. They're not sliding their feet. They're getting beat to the basket every time. So, mm. you know, Montrez Harrell has slow feet. Gasol has slow feet. And, and that's the problem. Like, you know, the way, the way Rob Palenka designed this roster this season was very top heavy. Like you have a lot of offense, you got guys that can be able to shoot with, uh, um, with um, Matthews and 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 Schroeder, Schroeder can shoot a little bit, but he's not like a consistent knockdown three point shooter. It's a great yeah. ball handler, but you know they're still not a great three point shooting team. And he thought that Anthony Davis was going to be playing more, more, uh, more, uh, more minutes at the five, so they can have like a more fluent, you know, lineup where you can be able to have interchangeable parts. It didn't work out that way because Anthony Davis got hurt and just messed yeah. up the plans. But mm-hmm. in hindsight, we should have signed back Dwight. We should have should have kept JaVale. Like that, that's what we should have did. Because Dwight's playing his ass off in Philly. 
and JaVale, JaVale is still a very good rim protector. So I, yeah. you know, I, I was, I wasn't mad when he, when he did it, but I was like, why you would like, I don't understand. I, I get the, the logic of why you will, you want to get Marcus Gasol. He can shoot the three, he can pass, but he's slow. He's definitely and, slow. And it's like, you know, you, you got this young team, just, just put some other young guys there or some more athletic guys there. And you'll be able to have the same team last year. Like I, I didn't, I just didn't understand why they went that direction. It's just, you know, do you think, do, do you, do you think if let's say if Anthony Davis injury is more serious as you know, yeah, they're making it sound to be like, do you think that maybe LeBron will consider ending it a little earlier, like maybe retiring a little earlier? It's it's possible, man. Like you know, if it if it gets to the point where he's looking at it and he's looking at the situation like, man, I don't think we we have a chance to compete the way I thought we would with this with this duo. Yeah, because at knows, his man? at his age, because at LeBron's age, he shouldn't be. You know, carrying he shouldn't a team. be have, carrying a team. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and I know he can. We all know he's he's capable of it because yeah. he's LeBron James at the end of the day. I mean, if LeBron James got traded to the Bulls at 40 years old, I'll take it. Exactly, you know? right. <laughs> like, it's, it's LeBron James. Yeah. But I feel like if you don't have Anthony Davis and you think, you know, and you were counting on that guy, you know, to be the guy for you, to help you, you know, relax a little, if he's not going to play, then it's kind of like, why should I continue to play him really? Yeah bust my ass the next year or the next two years. Like, well, well, we know that LeBron is not that type of guy. He's 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 cut off that Brady cloth where they're just going to play because they love to play. Yeah, but, sure. um, you know, the Lakers, for the Lakers, what I would do is I would be concerned. I think I would be – I may be willing to part with some of these pieces that they have this on this team to go get yourself another big star mm. because you need – you may need another guy because Anthony Davis may not be reliable enough physically health wise to, you know, to make you be where you want to be consistently. They just want a championship. Cool. But you know, if he's not healthy in the next couple seasons, where are the Lakers? You know, they're going to be, they're going to be one of those teams that are up there in the West. Okay. But do they have a fair legit shot of winning a title without Anthony Davis? I'm, I'm going to say no, unless they go get somebody else. Just like the Nets did, like you know, they they had they had Kyrie and Durant, and they said, "Listen, let's go get James too." Damn that, and we'll figure yeah. out the rest of the team. So maybe the Lakers need to do the same thing. Maybe they they also need to join the uh, the 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 trio superstar squad because the 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 Nets are the only team that has a trio. So yeah. you know, we'll we'll see, man. We'll see what the what what the market looks like, what the off season looks like. I think if the Lakers don't get to the finals. And if they lose and say like the second round, Rob Palink is not going to be happy. And mm. you're going to see him make some drastic changes across the board to be able to get them back to that, to that, to that position. Cause he's not, he's not scared about making a big deal. Like he will, yeah. he will go ahead and trade everything he has to make sure that they're competitive for the next two, three years. So, you know, we'll see, we'll see. Now, if the Lakers don't make the finals, yeah. Who do you got in the West going to the finals? Honestly, bro, I think that the Suns have a legit chance of getting there. If they can stay healthy, the Suns are a very good team. They're they're well coached with Monty Williams. Chris Paul, if he can stay healthy, Devin Booker, uh, DeAndre Ayton, they have a good team. They can shoot the ball really good. They're, they they can play some defense. So they have a shot. Um, the other team I think has a shot. I think Portland has a shot. I think really? Portland, yeah, I think Portland has a shot. Um, I also like, I like Denver, still like Denver. I think Denver with Jokic, the way he's playing, um, you know, I'm not a big, uh, Mike Malone fan, but you know, they are, they're playing well. And I think, I think that's it. I, I, I don't think that there's like a, a, like five or six teams that can make it to the finals in, in the West, yeah. but those teams stick out to me because they're playing really well. They have good pieces. They have good depth. Uh, and you notice how I didn't mention the Utah Jazz, right? Well, I was I was waiting. I was waiting for two things. <laughs> I was setting it up, hoping that you would say, you know what? As much as I don't want to admit it, the Clippers might oh, no. make the fight. <laughs> Listen, what the Clippers have to be worried about is trying to make sure 
that their jerseys don't have mold on it. Because when you're in the basement, you got to make sure that you have a dehumidifier. And you got to make sure that the space heaters are not too close together because you can cause a fire. A lot of those things can be able to be very, very dangerous for your team. So that's what they got to worry about. They yeah. have no shot. They want to know damn championship. No shot. And 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 Utah, no. Utah uh-huh. ain't no shot neither. Because the thing is with me, oh, I like Utah. I like I like uh um Donovan Mitchell. I think he's yes. a superstar. And I like Mike Conley. I think Mike Conley's having a good season. I like yeah. Bogdan. Conley. Yeah, great I like Conley. Happy for uh, Clarkson is having a great season. Like that, you know, there's a lot of guys. Yes, so there's a lot of a lot of these ex Lakers around putting up some Always. big numbers. But um, the one guy. That I, I always know. talk about. Yep. Rudy Gobert. Rudy Gobert. And you, you making $38 million and you putting up 12 points and 12 rebounds. No, 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 no. Yeah. No. No. No, no, no. no I don't, I don't, no, sure. I don't believe in the jazz either. Nope. Like, not unless, at all. unless, unless Carl Malone and John Stockton are walking through that door, Jazz ain't got no shot. No shot. And, and, and even they still won't have those shots. And even when they exactly, and even if they were there, they still yeah. wouldn't have a shot because that means that Jordan would be around to, <laughs> to to say no, 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 no way. I just kind of feel like the Jazz are the Jazz. Like That's I don't, it. I don't care it. what the rec- I don't care what the record is. It was the same thing back in the '90s with the Jazz that yeah. they were always a very good team, right. you know, and you know they would go to the finals and just blow it, or right. they go to the playoffs and blow it, like they. You know, and it's funny, um, LeBron, <laughs> LeBron, when he, when they had, they were doing the, yes. picking the, um, the all-stars, the team yeah. LeBron, team Durant, you know, how Donovan Mitchell and Rudy Gobert were the last picks. Yeah. And, and then LeBron Mitchell, he's like, you know what? Like, I play video games. Ain't nobody ever no, played no, with the Jazz. Like, and, and it's true. It's so true. true. It it's is true. So... Nobody picks the Jazz ever. There's two teams. I, I've picked the Jazz a couple times, but I'll tell you one team that I've never used. I've never used the Clippers in any <laughs> basketball game that has ever existed. None, not one, <laughs> not one time. Nope, not gonna do it. Not oh do it. man, that's not hilarious. Well, yeah, man. I, you know they they're a solid team, but like you said, it's it's Utah. Like it's just nah, it's, they're it's not. Nah, I don't I don't believe it. They're not. Yeah, I don't believe it at all. Yeah. So, yeah, moving gears to, uh, you know, spring training is, is upon us. Baseball, you're a big time Yankee fan. Uh, I just threw up in my mouth saying that. Um, but how do you feel about their chances this season? Because I think I think top to bottom, the Yankees have a good team. Um, but what what concerns me about the Yankees is that, you know, Zach Britton went down. That's going to be a big loss for them. And also judging Stanton, like what? can you expect out of those guys because they're never healthy and, and that's the, and that's, and the that's problem. A problem yeah no that's it and you know for the yankees the past like two years especially last year um that's been the issue with their team period right the health issues like they'd be injured throughout the whole season but what's hap- what's crazy is that they still though one of the most dominant teams right even it's while they're crazy. injured yeah and which is which is crazy but yeah stanton and judge man i mean there it's it depends a lot of the, on on their health yeah. you know and not for nothing Stanson when he's in there when he plays he makes a difference yeah he does uh, he's, he's with a, his bat and in the playoffs he did great he's an impact player man you know but um the 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 Yankees would you know every year I honestly feel the Yankees are going to win a championship yeah and maybe that's just because I don't know because they, you're spoiled yeah, because we're the Yankees. <laughs> that's that's what it is, pretty much. Yeah. But um, you know, I been there's I've been disappointed the past two three years. Right. You know that we we feel like we're gonna be there and then just we always fall short and something. Yeah, I I'm sick and tired of Chapman, bro. Yo. I am. Yo, this guy. I don't care if he throws three hundred miles per hour, <laughs> bro. This guy. Always gets rocked in the playoffs. Yeah, yeah. Always gives up the big time hit. Right. You know what I mean, like it's um, I can't depend on him. And you know, and you know what the thing is too is that Yankee fans, we've been spoiled. Yes. We had we had Mariano Rivera, bro. That you knew. You, you never had to worry. You knew that ninth inning started, son. Bro, you're walking out already. Yep. 
You're you turning have, you, off the you're turning off the channel. Turning off you're the like, TV. You know what I'm saying? Like once you hear yeah. that enter Sandman enter music. Enter Sandman, come out, son. That was it. Good night. Pack it up, bro. <laughs> Put the kids to sleep. Yeah. It's a wrap, you know. But I hope that, you know, I still feel confident. I do feel they'll make the hopefully they'll make the World Series. I mean, but the Dodgers though, bro. The Dodgers like, are, are ridiculous. Jesus Christ. They see, but you see. That feeling that you have when you look at that Dodgers team is how people used to look at the Yankees. Like, oh, my God, look at what they have. Look, look at this team. A-Rod, G, like, what What do you do? What do yeah. you do? Like, it was unfair. It was it unfair. Was. It was it was it was unfair. It was yeah. one through it was one through nine, one through ten. Power uh, bats. Power bats. You couldn't. Like our last hitter would be like Jorge Posada, right? And, and he and he could be able to give you twenty and six, and he could give like, you twenty home runs. Like it's right. just, yeah. but no, I like I like our chances. Yeah. But every year we get surprised, man. I mean, Tampa Bay, they you know they they played awesome. You know, right. Cleveland the year before. I think I think and, San Diego, man. The fact that they oof. got the fact that they got Blake Snell now, I was just like, why? Yeah, why? and I know you guys were. You guys were looking at him, right? No, Blake Snow? No, we were we were looking at uh Trevor Bauer. Oh, we Trevor were, Bauer. I'm sorry. That's that, the, oh, that's and, the one and, that and he snaked us. He snaked that us. was a shot to the nuts right there. Yeah. Giving giving Met fans autographs. Yo. <laughs> and you know what's crazy too is that his PR team tried to clean it up. Like I, I think they put out an article saying that once the merchandise had leaked with you know his jersey. He had yeah. called his agent. It was like, oh, oh, that's it. You know, we, we got to sign with the Mets now. We got to sign with the Mets because I can't do that to that fan base. I can't. I so the, and then they the 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 article says that the the agent was like, no, we still have options here. Blah blah blah. It's just like, don't try to make it seem like he's a hero. He screwed us. He screwed us. He played with our emotions and he signed with the Dodgers. That's all. That's all. Yeah, man. It's not even. It's not even. I can't even say it because as a Yankee fan, but it's almost not fair. Trevor Bauer going to the Dodgers, bro. Yo, yeah. it's like why? Like you, you, you don't need him. You don't, you don't need you him. Don't, you don't need him. You don't need him. And it's funny because I remember there was a. I don't know if it was one of your lives or something, but you were having that conversation with with Mike Guido. Yeah. Uh, because you were hyped about you know you were like Trevor Bauer's going to the Mets, you know, and, <laughs> and Mike Guido said, like, Yo, I cannot wait. You know, to see your reaction, to see your face when he doesn't, when he doesn't get signed. The pain, know? the pain. The yeah, pain. but I mean, at the end of the day, do you blame him? Yes. You know? Like, he's, yes, he's I do blame the, him. He's going to the Dodgers. He could have been. He could have been the 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 second second guy. It would have been a dynamic duel between Degrom and my man Bauer. That would have been a great top of your rotation. You kidding me? You kidding me? That means that those two guys at the top of your rotation, you can forget about losing streaks. It won't happen. It won't happen. You're right. And that's, and that's what I wanted. And then you have Syndergaard coming back in the like, come on, man. Nah, that pitch and rotation would have been. I had oh, dreams. God. I had dreams. That would have been very scary. But nah, man, Mets look. There's a lot of high. We are, we are right. We're okay. Like we have a, a lot a of shot. high expectations for the for the Mets this year. We have a shot to win the division. We're 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 definitely. In my opinion, a playoff team. I, you know, whether we oh, win yeah. a division or you know we get that one of those wild card spots. Wild cards. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we we have a we have a legit shot. It's just I want to see how Lare- uh, Luis Rojas does in year two of being a manager. You know, year one obviously is the COVID year and all that stuff. He replaced Carlos Beltran, and you know that whole thing was just whatever it was. But you know, let's let's give him a full year, see what happens, and. You know, ho- hopefully things go well, man. But you know, the fact that we got Francisco Lindor, that was a huge pickup. He's huge. he's auto- he's automatically the best five-two player we've ever had in the history yeah. of the Mets. Yeah. So, you know, it, it's they have to lock him up because if they don't resign him, I am going to storm City Field with with thousands of people, <laughs> and <laughs> and I'm gonna ask Steve Cohen, what's up? Okay. You just got here, but don't start metting stuff up. Like you, you're supposed to change the culture. Don't yeah. do this. Don't yeah, do yeah. it. All right? Nah. Don't do it. Nah, Mets, the Mets look official though, man. The, yeah. You know, you know, Yankee fans. You know, for Mets, you were always like, Nah, man. We hope the Mets do good. You know. Yeah, because you guys don't have any animosity towards us because we're the little brother. We hate you guys. Yeah. But you don't hate us because there's no reason to. We no. envy you. We want to be you. This is why we hate you. 
Yeah. Yeah. No, so, I, I, and I get it. I can't even say anything. I can't even say anything. About so it, it is like, I, I don't, I watch Yankee games on occasion. You know, I, 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 I see sometimes I, sometimes I'm like, why, why can't we have a, a Aaron judge? <laughs> why can't, I've never seen a Glaber Torres in a Met uniform. Why, why, why I can't have something like that? Like I just, you know, I watch because I'm, I'm a little jealous, man. I, you know, I, I get, I get upset sometimes. You no, know, nah, I, I hear you, man. As the, you know what thing with the Yankees too, bro? Like, yo, I, in these past like two, three years, that lineup they have. Yeah. They have one of the best lineups in, you know what I mean? In baseball. Yeah. And I'm always kind of like, how did we not make it to the world series? Right. Like, we always get so close, you know? I mean, although we got cheated out with the Astros. Hey, 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 listen, listen. When, when, it, when it comes to the Astros, I respect it because my um, motto is this. You ain't nothing, bro. <laughs> if you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. <laughs> and they said, damn it, we got to make sure we win. We got to we gotta secure the bag. I respect the effort. All right, Houston, I respect the effort. Yo, if there is any team I can't stand, yo, it used to on it. I mean, it's still the Red Sox. It's still the Red Sox, but, but the it's, Astros, it's more Astros have yeah. passed the Red Sox. Sir. <laughs> the Astros have passed the Red Sox, bro. <laughs> like, oh man, don't even talk to me. It's about true no though. If you if you if you ask any Yankee fan what team they hate the most around the board, people will say the Astros now. The Astros, yeah, they, hands you, down. <laughs> and you know what pisses me off is that they, you know, they this whole scandal came out and then um i was expecting the next season like for them go on a world tour and it's which stadiums are just yeah they're just cursing them out throwing stuff on the field pitchers are throwing things at their heads you know right and then covid happened and there's no fans <laughs> in the stadium <laughs> so they never got to experience right. the hate you know well, listen they may end up getting it this year so you know let, let's maybe let, let's but see. it's kind of like it was more fresh yes going yes. into the season so now it's yeah. kind of be like I hate the Astros, but I'm not going to do anything. Right, right, right. All right. my energy was wasted already. Yeah. <laughs> then I, I had all that built up. I right. Was like, <laughs> I was like, whatever, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. my God. Well, listen, Hope, before we get out of here, I'd like to do some rapid fire with you. And, and you know, you can give me your answers in, in regards to who you think is better than who. So I'm going to just spit out some random stuff. And I, I want to see what your what your take is. So Sounds good, man. And by the way, it's, it's funny because, you know, I've – you know, like I said, I'm, I'm the Robert De Niro, the fan of your show. <laughs> um, you know, whenever you've done this with other um, people, you know, I yeah. like kind of participate myself, you know. <laughs> but, you know, you'd be giving out the calls and I'm, you know, I'm giving my response and then the other person gives up another response. <laughs> I'm like, what? Yo, this dude's crazy. You know, yeah. whatever. But yeah, I'm ready. Let's see. Okay. Better actor. Leo. Oh, forget it. Or... What's my man name from um from honestly from... I really don't care already who the other person is. <laughs> Are you going Leo? <laughs> I'm going Leo. <laughs> Yo, I was uh, looking for Leonardo DiCaprio, bro. He can't do no wrong. But <laughs> but I'll still well, who you thinking of? I was thinking what's the dude's name from um from Batman who played uh Bane? Christian was... Bale? No, 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 no. Play Bane. Oh, Tom um, Hardy. Tom uh he's awesome. Yeah, yeah. But um, nah, man. I mean, yeah, you gotta, you gotta go, Leo. Gotta go, Leo. Leo, Leo, all day, bro. Better baseball movie. Ooh, The Sandlot or Rookie of the Year? Oh, The Sandlot. <laughs> I was scared. Actually, I thought you were gonna say The Sandlot or um, A League of Their Own. Oh, well, I will ask you that one. Ugh. Sandlot or A League of Their Own? <laughs> I'm gonna go A League of Their Own. <laughs> Uh, let's see. That's a good one, though. Um, let's go to sports now. Better defender. Kawhi Leonard or Scotty Pippen? No, oh, come on, man. That's, that's Scotty all day, man. That's, <laughs> that's Scotty. That's Scotty all day. And, you know, and back then, you know, the players, they went, you know, your best player was guarding your best player. Yeah, yeah. You know, true. and Kawhi does it sometimes here, but not really. Not taking anything away from Kawhi. Yeah. You know? But nah, man. Pippin them them arm lengths, man. Those hands, nah, man. 
I'm yeah, giving you... it to Pittsburgh. I'm also a little biased too. Yes, because that. you're a Bulls fan. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, it could have been. <laughs> yeah. Anybody else? Yeah. No, it's Pippen. Pippen all day. Better, better player, Tracy McGrady or Paul George? No, no, man, Tracy McGrady. Tracy. <laughs> Mac all day, bro. I I will say, <laughs> I will say about Paul George. Uh, how you call him? Flight risk, Mister. Um, flight Flight risk, George. Flight risk, Waldo George. Although yeah. George, you yeah, you got a bunch of days for him. <laughs> um, I guess because I listened to your show so much, I have kind of like equally hated Paul George now as well. <laughs> I'd be like, yo, you know what? Paul George is trash, man. Like, this like guy... he may be right. <laughs> yeah, this guy might be up to something. I do feel though he's always been a little bit overrated, though. Yes, I will, yes. I will admit he, you know, he's not a terrible player. No, but, no, he's not. He's not. I do. I, I always been like he's been a little bit overrated. I mean, his yeah. day ever since he left the Pacers, though, he's been like pretty much like whatever. Right. But um, but not nah, T Mac, man. T Mac was a beast, man. Yeah, T Mac. T Mac was was a special guy. Better, let's see, better point guard, Gary Payton or Chris Paul? Um, man, the glove was really, ah, the glove was, nah, uh, Chris Paul, man. Uh, Chris, yeah, Chris Paul. He gets, he gets a lot of criticism sometimes, Chris Paul, you know, because apparently he's, he could be kind of a, an a-hole. Yeah. Or whatever, but it, it's, it's, it's shown the you know you've seen the difference Chris Paul makes when he goes on yeah the- listen he's a he he's an organizational changer he is 100 100 I mean you see what what Phoenix is doing I mean yeah. Phoenix the Phoenix is picking up picking up from where they left in the bubble right and with Chris Paul there they're even better you saw what he did with OKC right like and it was nobody there, bro. I, I think that was his most impressive season ever. Yeah. In regards to like you know his leadership. Yeah, and we all know if I mean we all know if he would if he didn't get injured against um against Golden State, they would have got to the finals. They would have got to the finals. Like, yeah. Chris, and you know he's he's all around a great point guard. He's a good defender as well. Like, nah, Chris Chris Paul got that. Definitely. But Gary Payton, the glove man, um. He, he was awesome to watch, bro. Yeah, no, nah, he was. It was, was fun special. to watch. And all the trash talking he would do, bro, like, he he was fun. Right. Uh, let's see. I'm going to give you a, a, a three-person answer. Better dunker, Sean Kemp, Blake Griffin, or Zion Williamson? Dunker? Um, Sean Kemp. Oh, yeah. Rain Man. Rain man, son, yo, he he had a lot of hate, like <laughs> like dunking the ball, like it was real disrespectful. A lot of know? aggression, yeah. And you know, I forgot it was a dude. I think it was on Golden State. It is that famous clip when he banged it on somebody, yeah. and the dude fell, and you see him pointing at him <laughs> while he's on the floor. Oh man, Sean <laughs> Sean Kemp was very disrespectful, man. Like yeah, he was, he's a beast. Nah, I'm I'm going Kemp. He's he's one of my he's one of my favorite dunkers, definitely. Okay, uh, let's see. This one, this one may be easy. I don't know. Who would you rather have as a shooter? Reggie Miller, Ray Allen, or Steph Curry? Ah, uh, well, those are right there. The probably pretty much the three top shooters. You're right. Of all time, and you gotta pick one. You gotta pick one. Uh, nah, man, you gotta go with Curry, bro. Gotta Curry. go Curry. Curry's a he's already he's already the best shooter we've ever seen. Like he's a freak. He's he's the best shooter we've ever seen. Before Curry, though, it was hands down Reggie Miller for me. Yeah, like Reggie was is actually one of my favorite players of all time. Listen, like, he was he was he's up there, man. He's up. Like, there. He's one of my favorite players of all time. Um, actually, he <laughs> was Bradley who said he shaved his head off just because, <laughs> because <of Reggie Miller. laughs> which which was hilarious. But nah, man, I I loved Reggie. Um, he um, and one of the main reasons too is just kind of like you know he used to stick it to the Knicks. Yeah, stick it to the Knicks. Like, <laughs> and I loved it. I loved it. You know, what I mean, I um, it's funny. I I go a lot. I collect jerseys, and you know, Reggie Miller's jerseys. Yeah, 
um, is one of the hardest jerseys to find. Like really? Mitchell and Nets doesn't do Reggie Miller jerseys. Get out of here. Because Reg, Reggie hasn't agreed for like, oh, okay. for like for them to sell his stuff and whatever. That's why you don't see Reggie Miller in video games. Right. Um, as well. Um, but now nah, Reggie is, is was amazing. But now nah, Curry, Curry's the best shooter. And not for nothing, Curry is almost kind of like a Reggie. Like as far as that little bit of, you know, little bit of cockiness. Oh, yeah, a lot of cockiness, a lot. Yeah. You know, a lot of cockiness. Reggie Miller probably had more, you know, but uh, Curry got cockiness. I know everybody be like, oh, you know, he's like this. You know, he seems kind of quiet and nice. He's, he's a little jerk. He's a little no, jerk. He's, he's a jerk. And how do you defend that, bro? Like, as a you defender, can't. like, as a defender, like, I was just talking to one of my coworkers about that. Like, yo, that must make you so frustrated. Son. Yeah. If I if I had to guard Steph Curry, I'm telling you, I'm giving him at least four or five elbows. No, nah, for real. Like, you're going to you're gonna have to throw me out of this game because there's no way he's going to let him embarrass me like this. And, and then you're going to call foul on me if I try to, like, contest a shot. You're going you know, you to call, call foul on me. On me, like, <laughs> how does that make sense? Like, and and he's changed the game. You yeah. know, now people are pulling up from half court. Right. Like, when was that ever a thing? Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Now him and Damian Lillard are just doing it like it's nothing. Od, know? od. But now Curry's the greatest shooter you'll ever see. And Definitely. I'm going with Curry. Now, last question for you: Who is the better? MJ experience player, me or you? Uh, get the- <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I hate you so much, bro. I hate you for that one, man. Damn. You, you, you know, before I answer this question, I'm going to tell people. <laughs> you got to give them the context, right? <laughs> tell people a little bit of stories. So, um, yeah, MJ experience on the Wii. Well, you know, one of the best video games. Best video ever. games. We used to go very hard at it. Um, me, Basco. I'm not even going to say BJ's name yet. Because uh, it was <laughs> me, Basco, and a few other people. Uh, one time, it was a time we were chilling at the crib. And we were all going at it with with um, the MJ experience. Yep. BJ is just sitting on the couch. He wants <laughs> no parts of the game. <laughs> Um, I just thought, you know, he was too cool for school. Like we were telling him, like, yo, you wanna you wanna play? He's like, nah, nah, I'm good. I'm good. Like, I don't want to play. I'm like, oh well, you know, this guy's being a party pooper. Like, <laughs> All right, whatever. That one time that happened. The next time, um, we all got together. He was just like, yo, yeah, I'll play this time. I'll play. L- yo, little did we know, this guy comes in and <laughs> demolishes it. <laughs> goes perfect like on certain da- there's actually video out there of that um he goes perfect on the dances he's beating us all in this competition and little did we know what he was doing he was pretty much um studying us <laughs> the first time all around studying the game watching how everybody moved their feet work and everything. He already had cop the game on the side later yes, on. Yes, yes I did. And started playing at home by himself. And he was waiting for that moment for <laughs> all of us to get together. And he came in there like Woody Harrison and White Man Can't Jump, like acting like he can't play. And you're a ringer. Oh. And, um, and you know what? I'm going to say it. Just because it's your show, just because it's your show, I'm going to say that whatever, you're better. Yeah. But listen, yeah. man, I, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to lie to you. It just shows you, Hove, that I am an obsessive competitor. Oh, it is sick. It's sick. Yeah. It's, it's, the, it's the mamba. It's the mamba mentality. Yeah, man. babe. Because I'm. T- I remember that night like it was like it was yesterday. I'm looking at. It, I'm like, oh, this game is fire, but I ain't trying to come out here and lose, man. <laughs> so I need to. I need to kind of sit back and see how they how they work these 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 controls. And say, I said, okay, all right. So yo, I'm telling you, I think that was. I can't. Was it a Saturday? Was it a Friday? Or, or it was probably a Saturday. Yeah, it got, oh, that man. had to be a weekend. Yo, that yeah. following week, I made sure I caught that week. Cop that MJ and I was going. <laughs> I was going in for like four or five days straight, yeah. waiting, <laughs> waiting for the opportunity. <laughs> Yo, oh. I was so tight. I was so tight because <laughs> at that point I was kind of like the man. No, you, you, no, no, you weren't kind of. You were the man. You were the yeah. man. 
and I, I had my guns pointed at you. I said, I gotta come here. I gotta make sure that I beat home. I have to beat home. At I my house. Yeah, at my I, own home. Exactly. I ain't worried about Basco. I ain't worried about no, nobody else. It was home I gotta beat. That's the guy. Yo. That's the Jordan right there. I swear it was probably a moment during the game. Like, I just happened to look back. <laughs> and it, BJ's not looking at the screen. He's just looking at me. <laughs> he, he had the moves already locked down. And he's just making the eye contact just to be like, oh, I'm on you. I'm, I'm watching <laughs> I, what you do. I got you. I got you. You're, yeah, you man. were in my sights. Trust me. Oh, oh man. man. But listen, it, this was this was, this was was a great interview, man. I, I thank you for coming on the show. Well, man, it's been a pleasure. You know, I... I we always talk sports. We always talk movies, and you know it's always like this. It's it's a nonstop laugh fest. So, you know, thank you for coming on, and you know, keep being you and being a being a great father because, you know, that that's that's a new thing for you, and you you, you kind of settled into it now and got your yeah. own routine. You know, Izzy Gangsta is a is a is a, <laughs> is a special special little girl. So. Thank you, man. Shouts, Thank shouts you. to you guys, man. You guys are doing a good job. Now I appreciate it, man. And you know, it's um, you know, um, I, I was actually telling you before this show, I'm like, you know, um, my schedule now is around my daughter, like whatever yeah. her nap time is, you know what it is, whatever yep, the routine yep. is, your that's what your schedule bases on. And yep. you wanted to get this show on, you know, you wanted to do this, you know, you hit me up randomly. And I thought I was dreaming when I started the cast. I'm like, wow, the, <laughs> the call. I, got, I finally got that call. Got call. <laughs> I got that call. <laughs> and, um, you know, I'm thinking about the time and I'm like, damn, you know what? I'm just going to have to wake up my daughter to do this show. You know? <laughs> I'm going to have to wake her ass up and say, I got this all even podcast. I got to go yeah, on. Get, get out. Get out. <laughs> one shot. You know, it's okay. I can't lose it. You know, but uh, nah, man, it, it was awesome being on the show. Um, like I said before, bro, I was super proud of you. The All Even podcast is dope. It's the, I don't care what anybody said, the best sports podcast there is. And I don't care if you say it's the only podcast I hear. Right. <laughs> which it is true. I don't hear any other podcast <laughs> there is. <laughs> but um, nah, man, you're made for this. You know, you're going to make it big. We'll be there by the side, by your side the whole time. You already know you got my support. And keep doing your thing, man. No, I appreciate it, man. I appreciate it. So. I'll talk to you, my man. All right, man. Be safe. I'd like to thank my man Hove for coming on the show. It's always a it's always a pleasure talking to him. That's my movie buddy. That's my dude. That's my trailer guy. So shouts to Hove and his family. Keep doing what you're doing, man. Coming up after the break, the greatest segment on the planet, Dummy of the Week. On a Saturday. It's all even. Yo, it's your man DJ G Money from that Flip the Script podcast. Yeah, you see yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, we in the yeah. studio right now. Flip shut up. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh, 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 listen. Shout out to the All Even podcast. My oh, man Barry oh, Grant Jr. Whoa, 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 What's up, whoa, man? Whoa, whoa, whoa. What happened? What you, you, you want to say to the people? Shout out to somebody else's podcast. Yeah, my nigga's enjoying. What's up? All oh, Even. All oh, Even podcast. Yo, it ain't even up here, boy. <laughs> we put this girl something. All Even. Yo, you. Oh, my God. What's up with you, man? Now, you got well, that's a shout out. You keeping this? Yeah, keep all that. <laughs> you want to jump all in the even podcast, right? Yeah, all shout even. Shout out to all even podcast, right? Yeah, all yeah. even. Uh, That's your man? My man. Fine. All right, shout out to all even podcast. He cool? 100%. He cool. Is he? he cool? Let me see. Is he cool? Yeah. Is he? Oh. 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 Also check us out at CigarGentsAndGals.com We're everyday apparel for cigar smokers. Let's get it. What's going on? What's up with you? It's your boy the Candyman, the ALFRE to the D. It's your boy Alfred from the Rap Lab Podcast. And it's the one and only True G. Just call me the QG from the Rap Lab Podcast. And you tuned in to All Even with Barry Grant. Boy, that shit crazy. Welcome back, y'all. So without further ado... The greatest segment on the planet, Dummy of the Week. Dummy, yeah. We pick candidates on Tuesday and Saturday, and then we pick the winner on that Saturday show. Myers Leonard was the candidate on Tuesday, but Myers Leonard, I ain't gonna lie to you, bro. You're all right, because what this other dude did, may I have the drum roll, please? 
And the winner is Matt Rowan, high school basketball announcer in Oklahoma. He's my winner for because, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, would you believe me if I told you that this basketball announcer, this high school basketball announcer, said some outlandish stuff during the national anthem at a high school basketball game? You had the girls on one side kneeling for the national anthem. And you can hear this announcer say some racial things. Call these girls the N-word. Now, would you also believe me if I told you that he blamed his outburst on having type 1 diabetes? <laughs> You can't make this up. He said some racial stuff because of his diabetes. So if his sugar was intact, if his sugar was all good, the N-word would have never flew out of his mouth. I have never heard an excuse like this. I got to give it to him. I have to give it to him, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. It's unique. It's a really unique way of saying I'm not racist. <laughs> but these young girls go ahead and kneel because that's what they believe in. And the first thing that comes to your mind and then your mouth is the N-word. So you're going to blame that on your diabetes? man. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, this is a swindler. This is a grade A swindler. And I'm telling you right now, I am sure he probably tried this before. He probably said this word out in public, and he was about to get his ass bust, and then said, I, I, I have diabetes, I have diabetes. Blame it on that. I'm sorry. You can't, how do you, how does your brain even process an explanation? <laughs> how? I don't, I don't understand. You have to be really, really clever or you really have to have experience of a dummy truck just continuing to run all over you and the dummy gang just beats you up every day. It's just, th that's what I think it is, Your Honor. That's what I think it is, the jury, is that this guy is an idiot. And when idiots do things, they don't think. It's just all reactionary. So because you see these little black girls doing something that you don't like, you're going to call them the N-word. See, it's the closet racists that bother me, Your Honor. They bother me because if you don't like somebody, just make sure you, hey, listen, I, I don't deal with blacks. I don't deal with, so just stay away from me so people know. But you're going to go ahead and mingle in society. You're going to go ahead and shake hands with a black person because you're going, you have to. You got to do it for your job. Nah, stand your ground. Don't try to apologize and be on your 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 apology tour now. Nah, nah, nah. Ride this out. You a tough guy. You like to talk about little black girls this way. Little girls this way, it's fine. But when that bus ass come your way, you should know where it comes from. Don't blame it on the diabetes. Blame it on yourself. It just goes to show you that you can have white friends, you can encounter, you know, white colleagues, and you think that y'all are cool, and the first time y'all argue or the first time you do something that bothers that particular person, they'll just flash off and say the N-word about you to their their family or their 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 girlfriend or whatever it is. Those are the dangerous ones. But like I said. I'd rather the racists that are out front with it. Be out front with it, because at least I can see you. At least I can see where you're coming from, and I can choose to interact with you or not. This guy, coward. He's a coward. And more importantly, he's going to hide behind diabetes? That's the weakest move I've ever heard, Your Honor. And for that, cancel culture should definitely come after him. So Matt Rowan, 
You may lose a lot of upcoming street fights because of what you did, but you're a winner. You're a winner for Dummy of the Week. That's all for this week. I'll see you guys on Tuesday. Until then, stay safe, stay cool, peace. You can catch me on Twitter and Instagram at All Even Podcast. Listen to the show on Anchor, Spotify, SoundCloud, and wherever podcasts are available. And check out my YouTube channel, All Even Podcast. And don't forget to share, like, and hit that subscribe button.